Today we're teaching a TFT beginner how to play the game. It's my friend Billy. He's never played before. The goal is to get him from never played to gold in a week and from never played to masters in four weeks. Time recording, three days. It took him to hit gold. So we're already kind of ahead on the <laughs> on the timeline, but let's see how far we can get him, right? We teach him Kogmo today. It's a one cost comp. One cost comps are good for starting out because they're very linear. We play the same units, same board, same items. You get to roll your gold in 3 1 for the boards. You don't have to flex at any point in the game either. And there are very few decisions. It's easy to make a very linear game plan he can follow without me being present. So we can set him up with three hours of coaching for a full week of gameplay. And which is the goal here, right? but um, that's what we do. Next week, we'll probably teach him Senna, but for now, cock more it is, and then uh, we'll see how far he gets. Enjoy the session. This part of the game doesn't really matter for you. Uh, you get to choose between different starting conditions for the game, but like, yeah, they don't matter much for us. There is for sure something to do here, but like, it's a one out of eight that you win it anyways, and like, it's, it's pretty low impact. At some point, you get to know them all, and then you start having favorites, and some of them are like fun, and some of them don't do anything, but at this point, we don't care about them at all. So the uh, the basic game plan we're going for is we're playing uh, a one cost reroll is basically the style. We're sitting low level and just rolling a lot until we hit the three stars basically the main reason we're doing this is because this comp is on rails basically there's like the level conditions are very set and the roll conditions are very set it's a very easy thing to like start on you can uh, you can pick out the blue orb on the on the ground if you want to we buy all the if you look at the shot right two people have like two of the units have like the green the green mark on them that's the guys we want right? that's why we put the thing in the planner because that's those are the only units we're looking for and everything else we just sell basically you just pull it down so if you take the shen right you just pull them downwards he's on the uh, he's on the bull and the bench basically yeah, so there's so these units are in the shop you pay gold for them and then on the bench which is not the holy fuck that's a shot you sell them by dragging them down but we want to keep that guy so everything that's not yet fuck that guy and fuck jenna yeah, yeah, yeah. This is probably just getting like slightly started. So you get levels and levels give you extra slots for units. So we're slow we're slowly getting more and more space for units. And then we just buy the full shop. Because it disappears every round. We want to buy all these units. Oh no, just buy the shop real quick if you can make it in time. Nah, it's fine. We're just this is just the first game. We're just getting you used to how the interface feels really. And uh, so so these we, uh, there is like a way to tell you how to choose this on your own, but I'm just gonna do it for you at the start. We want the middle one, so we, we can roll the left and the right one just to see what the other options are. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Like it doesn't matter. This is completely fine. The main goal here is just for you to get used to like putting units on the board buying shops nothing needs to happen here so we, we might just ff early and then go again later we just need you to get like into it so you want to make 10 here like make it getting to 10 gold is super important here no more 10 gold like, so you get an extra gold every turn now basically if you're above 10 gold and since we, we can't really play the game so since we don't level because we're looking for one cost we're going to be weak all of stage two so for the next five fights you're going to be weak we're just going to play three units when the other people are playing four units, we're going to be playing four units when they're playing five units. So we're not supposed to be winning fights. And um, so we try to get five losses in a row because that gives us extra gold out of the streak because we can't consistently win. And then it also gives us prior on the carousel. So like there's a, in two fights, there's going to be a carousel where you get to pick an item in order of how low HP you are. So we're trying to get low HP both for gold reasons and because we need a very specific item on the carousel. Um, so, th so the first five rounds, you don't really play the game. You just kind of sit here and lose. And that's that's on purpose. And then if you right-click a component, if you try and right-click one of those, you get to see the items they can make. So this is one of the hardest parts of the game. It's like figuring out how items work and like which items are good and how to play around item economy. Now we're going to do that slightly slowly. We're going we're gonna to go slow about it. I made like, a, I have a lot of information in the sheet, but we just, the first thing we need to just get you used to the game. Like what's a shot, putting units on the board, moving them around. That's like winning here doesn't matter at all. We just, you just need to get used to the game. So when we get further in, you need to, to position a way where you act where you make sure you lose stage two basically because some people just play really bad boards and it's very important you don't beat them on accident <laughs> so, so we're going to put our backline carries we're putting our 80 carries in the front and our tanks in the back basically to try and lose fights that's going to be there but th th this game it doesn't matter this game we don't care about winning at all but we uh, we also just don't care about winning or losing this game if you can like move around units on the board maybe just like move them around just to get a feel for it like what are your options are and like a lot of, like there's a lot of like basic positioning stuff we're going to yap about the moment we get into a real game but one of the things we want to look for early is like one of the main mistakes people People make early in their TFT careers, they don't put their main tank in front of their main carry. It seems obvious, but you can kind of lose track of it. But it, it seems obvious, right? But this guy, look at this guy's board, right? We have a Nico two star to the right side, which is his best tank by a mile. And to the left side, there's only a Yasuo one, right? So imagine your board had damage on the left side and not the right side. You'd kill the Yasuo and then go straight into his back line. But if you had Nico two in front, it'd take a lot longer for him to get there. It's just like you want to delay the enemy getting to your carry as long as possible. Right? It's like it does. We will get into like more complicated positioning like <laughs> in two weeks, probably. But we're just gonna do full basic positioning for now. You can hit like challenger without scouting once so like positioning is like you can learn very basic positioning and just sit and you'll be fine so you want the blue thing you want the tier here tier is the main thing you want you take the th 
volley bear because he's a three cost basically so this is how the carousel looks so you just walk into him here and he's red and he costs three exactly you can see on the circle the circle is the value basically so the green circle is two gold red circle is three gold and the gray circle is one gold it's like the, the tier of the unit right? and then the tier is so important for us that we don't care about the other thing we just care about the tier we need two of them to build this it's not the best item in the comp but it's close and it's hard to get to because people want tiers you buy you buy all the ones with the green the green check marks those we always buy um, and then you sell everything that's not those if you sell like the volleyball and the locks you still make 30 here i think but this is basically like the game plan for stage two looks like this and then next stage you're going to start playing the game on the left side of the board there's like a totem with like a small icon above it we chose earlier if you right click you can you can like read what it does up slightly so you can see right by your little guy exactly so that's an, an open that's going to be the main source of variance between games and it usually changes the way you play the game slightly in this case you need to position in a specific way to get the value right? you can see if you put two units next to each other they get a visual effect which means it's active legally we're trying to lose so you don't really want it here but it doesn't matter it's gonna be like yeah a lot of augments change the way you play a lot basically it means making like a very stringent guy it's like slightly hard buy all of these so so those are those are the ones we're looking for so we're willing to pay gold to hold them because we're gonna pay gold to find them later anyways by rolling so we'll, we'll just pay gold for them this is a, this is stage two it looks like this it's pretty slow stage three on there's gonna be stuff to do and usually there's some stuff to do here but it depends on the lobby like there's some positioning stuff you can do early game so you can see who you're fighting there's a pool of people you're uh, available to fight you and you try to position specifically around that pool of people and it's like oh on this side they have a one star shitter that takes a lot like that's have very low hp if i can kill that while still losing the fight i save two hp stuff like that like it's yeah we'll do that way later it's gonna be like week three week four kind of stuff if if at all like it might not never it might never get relevant it's like i don't do it unless i'm playing tournaments basically it's <laughs> it's a lot of effort the payout is pretty big but it feels like it's a lot of effort for very little basically so this is gonna be the scariest part of this, this is going to be the hardest thing to teach you probably but like if you put a car Caitlyn and Kogmo all the way to the right just two one Caitlyn one Kogmo all the way to the right and you buy the Nar and you replace one of your, your one of your Kogmos with the Nar yeah, and you put Nar up front up front straight up the issue with this is I'm going to have to teach you this we, we talked about how to figure this out because Crocs are kind of hard to beat if you full open because these guys are pretty strong the ones you're fighting now um, if you lose to them you don't get the resources they have inside them so they basically drop resources and so you need to be able to clear this but consistently clearing this is like slightly hard when playing one cost reroll because your board's by design pretty weak right? and you don't want to spend resources before after this fight so we need, we're trying to figure out a way to make this consistent and i think the basic i'm just going to show you the basic positioning for it because there's only one on the right side so you want to focus on the right side basically um, but it doesn't matter this game like, we have three games of normals that don't matter at all so you're just getting used to how the, the game looks you sell everything that's not the units we want and then so one feature of the stage we're at now 3-1 is that you're still level four by this point. If you look down the bottom left, you can see you're what, two XP away. You get two XP a turn. So you're basically going to be level five next turn. But you want to be level four because your, your shot ups of one cost are higher here. So we want to spend gold by rolling here. So if you press on D, yeah, or refresh, press the, the reroll button with the mouse. You just go all the way down to 40 gold here and, and buy units along the way. And that's the that's the main thing we're going to do this stage. We, we put into like, if they don't have the green little mark, they're not interesting to us basically. Oh yeah, if they make two stars, yeah, yeah. If they make two stars, they lose the mark, but it's just because you found enough to combine them. And we'll just keep going one more and then we're done yeah that's enough we sit here so it's because so, so we're willing to pay so we pay one gold because we're going below 50 gold so it costs one gold in interest but we get the gold quote unquote get the gold back because we're getting to roll for better odds for one cost which is what we're looking for we want to reroll the left and the right one we roll the middle one and just click the one to the left so now that's the game plan we still have yet to find a choker which is pretty rough you can roll once here if you want to probably you can buy the guy too before so you can buy the malphite you need one more malphite after this one you can hit the three star already if you, if you hit it the roll once here is fine you want to stay about 50 but we also want to find this choker this is basically what we're trying to do right so you can see now you get like a bigger golden version of them and that's what we're trying to do with both Kogmo and Cho'Gath uh, mostly Kogmo and Cho'Gath Malphite's very nice and then Caitlyn's also good but mostly we need Kogmo and Cho'Gath those are like the important ones um, and that's the game plan that's how this comp works and when you hit Kogmo 3 and Cho'Gath 3 then you start buying a lot of levels but not until then the comp basically spikes on Cho'Gath and Kogmo and you can consistently do this mostly every game I think we played I've played a smurf where I've just done Kogmo only and we like tried to follow the guide I wrote down so this is the game plan we'll just run another game I think so we're probably FFing in a second but it means you can try and practice a roll down here. We should also look for like key binds, maybe. Like if you if you bind the rerolling button to like a key a key bind, it's it's a lot better. I often don't do it, even though I'm supposed to. But like just getting used to rolling with the keyboard is really really good, just because it's so much more efficient. And um, so we could do that now. Just like look for the key bind. I think getting that set up is really really nice. If you escape, exactly. Yeah. Refresh store, it's unbound. Yeah. You can also do a level up. I think usually it's on F, but it can it can be whatever you want it to basically. It, it mostly it wants to be something you don't fat finger. Right? Leveling when you want to roll is usually pretty bad, but it like it, it doesn't matter much. You're gonna be fine. I think we just you just kind of roll your gold to get a 
of like to try and get some some rolling going and that's about it we don't care about econ and stuff we're probably going to ff in a second and then go again i'm going to show you the generic guide but this is a lot of like what's going to happen you're going to getting getting like doing this fast is also going to be important later but this point we don't care much about the speed we'll take another tier we want two of those that's a good learning experience but you don't but which is fine it's like yeah again like this is mostly about just learning how the game functions this is one of the ways it functions right now. yeah this is the only micro in the game <laughs> it used to be people complained a lot it used to be the first round of the game the very first thing that happened in the game was like oh everyone on this like just waiting for the port like for this to open at the same time so people were fighting for the same components but i think you roll you roll the, you roll it to like zero gold here just to like roll and then we push this to the board i think and then we ff just to like get a feeling of what's going on here just like just go to, until you run out of gold yeah Thank you. Not bad, not bad. And uh, we'll do basic positioning. This is what you're going to uh, look for when we're done with it. Like next game, you're going to try to get to this positioning too. And uh, what we're looking to do is put Kogmo on the Caitlyn spot, Caitlyn in the Kogmo spot, just swap those two. And then you put Malphite and Cho'Gath in front of your carries, basically. That's going to be like how it's supposed to look. And you can you can do a lot of stuff with it later, but like that's the easiest way to play stage two. And it also lets you kill Crocs often because you have to focus on one side of the Crocs, basically. Yeah, the goal is to get you to a point where you can play the game on your own. We're trying to get there in two hours. I think we might get there. This looks pretty promising. And now we try to like make the board. He goes in front too, just up in front of Cockmo and Caitlyn, and then Chokaf goes in. And then you want uh, you want Nico in too, instead of the you have an R on the board currently. He's just kind of hiding. He's a, he's a small green guy. He's hiding in front of uh, in front of Cockmo. We'll get they sneak onto the board. So if you have open slots on the board and the round starts, it's just gonna push something from the bench onto the board. So often you end up with stuff on the board you haven't chosen to have on the board. Basically, you get used to it at some point. It's mostly about like seeing the units, what they look like on the board in the shops, etc. Like we're just trying to get a feel for the game. So stuff like this is gonna happen a lot um, at the start. Yeah, you got your upgrades right. So he's two stars. You have some three stars you have no items but we're, we're gonna fix that at some point it's like the units get a lot stronger they get about 50 percent stronger every time you upgrade them so the first upgrade is 50 percent, and then the next upgrade is 50 percent again but it's 50 percent of 50 percent, which is quite nice right uh, if you right click i think it tells you actually right? yeah, yeah that's the way you get yeah you get to check you can check right? and then you want nico in over you have two choke outs in currently it's not that important but we'll get to the basic positioning here all of this is gonna like in, in like five games all of this is gonna be super easy but it's just you need to get used to it right? so now you have so this is the the reason this is strong you get both mythic heaven you beam with the sniper it's a really nice call one choke out and Malphite in the front line, if that makes sense. If you're running uh, generically, that's good because you want the enemies far away from your carries. You want to move them up. So, like, if you click Malphite, you can see the hexes he's available on. You, know, you want him on the front, front, basically, like all the way up. That means the enemies are going to stop further away from your carries, so your carries are less in danger because they don't get to walk through and they have to stop and attack them. Right? You're also playing snipers, so you get more damage the further away they are. But generically, you want like your carries as far away from enemies as possible, and this is the way to get that. Right? So most positioning in most comps is just going to look like this, basically: units in the front, units in the back, and then nowhere, no one in the middle. Basically. That's how it often looks. And then, so so one thing that's going to be the main. So you see, you lose in this, even though you have a lot of upgrades, is because this guy has items on his board and you don't. I guess you're winning anyways. But so items are really important. They, if you have three items on a unit, you usually more than double the strength than you would be without them. So so items are very big part of the game. And like playing around items is going to be where you get most of your power from. And so items are like items are pretty hard, but they're also super important. So we have to spend a lot of energy on it. We want the left ones, so we'll we'll roll the right ones to see if, if we get something better. And we, now the right ones the best ones. So we we'll roll the left one once. Yeah, and then we just click the left the right one i mean left one was an option but it's it's like an option for a weird reason so so we want to reroll until choga three every time choga three and cogma three is like we always need those but the other ones we don't need you keep rolling until you hit those basically i think the current the rules i wrote down is like if you're below 27 hp just roll zero gold and try to hit your stuff every time yeah, that's a good point like having played league before is a big thing like, it makes everything so much easier because it's a lot easier to communicate to you what i'm talking about I couldn't say malphite it'd be a <laughs> it'd be a lot slower right? so so it helps out a lot with like just like, just like speed of information transfer is like a lot higher than i've seen some like i've taught at least two people to play this game they didn't hadn't played league before and eh, well, i've taught one person to play the game that hadn't played league before and like it just takes a, it takes a lot longer <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot more exposition. And like, so if you if you if you look at your items real quick, I'm just gonna do this before you die. This is gonna be the next thing we focus on next game. If you right click on them, you can see all the options they make, right? And we are, I have like a tier list. I'm gonna show you of like how good the items are for your comp. And it's basically you're gonna build. There's two types of items in your case. I guess there's three types of items in the game. There's like tank items, and then there's AD and AP items, and there's some hybrid items, but most most is like in two portions, like damage and tank items. And the damage is mostly split in two categories: the AD ones and the AP ones. So it's like in 
league, right? There's a split between the two types. If you if you go and right click Kogma, for example, you can see what kind of scaling he uses by hovering his ability. He's right below his uh, exactly. You see, it's it's basically just only AP. So we're looking for items with good AP stuff on it. And no, he uses multipliers fine, but mostly we want AP items on him. Kaylin does ADs, we want AD items on her and stuff like that. Right? Generically, we, in this comp, we don't really play around Kaylin. We just play around Kogma. Kogma and Choker, those are both. Those are the main like that's the backbone of the comp basically. I just do all of it. The only real units in your combo, those guys. Guy to the right, that's yellow way here is really good. This is like, it has nothing to do with the item. It's just that guy is just very strong for you specifically. He's a mythic unit. You're playing mythics basically. And he's he's one of the best units in the game, even without mythics. Um, but he's on your late game. Like level nine, he's always on the board. He's on the board the moment you get him usually, but you don't get him before level eight, level nine usually. We'll make some items and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll probably die. But we'll, if we don't die, we'll just FF and go again. But let's just like, if you take two, you, if you can see what they're called, right? They're called a lot of different stuff. Now that's a tear. There's a glove. There's a rod. There's a sword. There's a cloak. Yeah, a chain. You know most of these from like league, right? So you want to do double cloak on Cho'Gath here. Two cloaks make a dragon claw. You slam it on him. You need to put it in. You can do it on bench too. I think that's good for him actually. So if you buy the Yasuo in your shop and you put the two cloaks on him on the Yasuo. Yeah, exactly. It makes the item on the Yasuo. If you now sell them, the item is now made. You can't get the components back, but it means this is like if you put that on Choker, that's an easy way to like not mess up basically. And you're gonna have to go slightly high. His model is like slightly too big, so his feet are like. So that's how you make an item, right? And then there's like yeah, there's a lot of different components. There's eight different components, so there's a lot of different items, like 64 different items, something like that. Double sword gives a lot of AD. Sword glove is an IE. Like a lot of this like. It's like slightly intuitive, but some of the items are weird. Like blue buff is, is super important for low mana units because it reduces the max mana. So you go from 30 to 20 in the Kogmo case, which means you cast 50% more, right? which is quite powerful. Yeah, so that's why we want tears as much as we want them. I think that was pretty promising. We go again. We go again. And then, uh, yeah, same game plan, same base positioning, put all the units to the right. The reason that we were to the right is mostly just because it, it sets us up for crocs, which we're scared of. Losing to crocs is pretty is pretty expensive. Because right? you, you get you get the resources back later, but being down resources a whole stage is usually quite expensive. Yeah, you can read those if you want to. And if you click one of them, vote, it just moves your guy there too. We're going to be high silver, low gold next week, someone in the chat says. I think, you, I think you're gold guaranteed, but... We'll see. <laughs> I'm pretty optimistic about this. I think you're gonna be. I'm, I think you're gonna be pissed, chilling. I still think like a month and you're masters if you put in like three hours a day, two hours a day. Oh, no, I People, I, I've been called slightly delusional for that take, but I think it's just yeah. <laughs> I think it just works. I think it just works. We'll see. Fuck him. He's not in the chart. There's now a guy. He's a fraud. Ooh, yoink. That's a fucking. That's a fucking drop. So you need to play two units here. So you can't really sell all of them. But you just yeah. If you play two units here, you don't lose basically. If you play one, Kogmo dies if he tries to sow this. I think the Nar might be a, eh, maybe he does. It doesn't matter. Because you don't need to like you can just play two here, it's free to do. But yeah, neutrals are weird. There's like it's usually a break from the game where right? you get time to think in neutrals because they're designed in a way where you're basically guaranteed to kill them. You can also lose if you're playing like a one cost reroll like we are. That's a good opener. It's a lot better than the last game. Yeah, so this is a, we're doing normals first. He can't do rank before he's done three games, so which is actually fine here. Oh, it doesn't work when I do this. So when I'm not full screen, I can turn my mic off and yap to the chat, and then when I am full screen, it doesn't let me uh, mute mic on keybind, which is weird. We'll roll the uh, the middle one and the right one, probably. And we'll roll the left one, too, and then we'll click the middle one. I'm going to teach you how to, like, figure out augments, but we're just going to, like, not think about that at the start. Cho'Gath and Malphite in the front, and then we're fine. I think that's, like, all of it here. This is the this is the gameplay for stage two. You sit here and wait. <laughs> if you're playing completely optimally, you buy some of the other units, but... I think it's it's not it's, it's not worth thinking about at all. It's because the, there's a shared pool. So the more one cards that are gone, the easier it is to hit the ones you want. But like thinking it's so little that thinking about it at all is a waste of time, it's, especially at the start. Even at like high at the high end, it's not worth it most of the time. So just like yeah, just sit here and, and wait a lot. And you, now you're killing units, right? So you're still losing, but you, you save two HP by killing one guy here. Um the scary the scary part of position like this is, is legally this is good front to back positioning. So you could end up losing a fight if someone's playing a really bad board. Like if you had a Cho'Gath 2 here, which was very possible, you would have won the fight which is legally bad. So we want to later, we don't, like, at the moment it doesn't matter, but at some point we're going to do the slightly unintuitive thing of putting Kog'Maw in the front and then the other two in the back just to make sure we lose because the tier is so important to us and the losing is so important to us because we want uh, to optimize the gold we have available on um, on level four and the way we get more gold on level four is we like, we get as much gold this stage as we can and that's getting a good loss streak going basically. Your natural, even if you don't buy XP, you get level five already on like three, two basically. I think I need to figure out a way where I can like mute because like, a lot of the stuff I'm going to say is going like, to not be directed at you but like there's a guy in, in the chat yapping about if you hit upgrades you can do you can position like this front to back if you have no upgrades and you can swap so the moment you hit 
Choga, too, he has to put him in the back because he win the fight. I think that's mostly slightly true, but I don't think it's worth thinking about. I think Choga, too, is just so strong that it might be scary anyways. It's a good start. You're killing a lot of units, which is really nice. Uh, I think we're going to end up, most of the time, you're going to be in a spot where you don't need to kill units because what it does is saves your HP, but you're probably going to be in a spot where you're streaking most of the game often, which means the HP is pretty... Like, if you win the game with 50 HP, the HP didn't matter. Right? It only matters if you're restricted by it, and currently we're not restricted by HP. Well, we're not going to be, I think, at least. Yeah, so you can try and try and right click the tier and read uh, read the blue buff item. Yeah, yeah. But uh, try and read what it try and read what it does. And like, we're just gonna we're gonna teach you some basic TFT that's not specific to Cogmo too. Right? So the main line we're interested in here is the max mana reduced by ten. And the reason we're interested in that is like, if you check units, how right click, you can see how much mana they have, what their max mana is. Like, if you check the Cogmo, he's thirty, right? So we drop a lot of his mana. Whereas like, if you check Garen, he's probably like one hundred and twenty or like ninety or something. Eighty, he's eighty mana, right? So it doesn't do much for Garen, but it does a lot for Cogmo. So it's it's a, it's an item basically designed around being strong and Cogmo and other units like him, right? You want the tier, yeah. So we'll walk slowly around trying not to run into something else, right? And legally you're on a clock because now other people get out and then they can yoink it from you. So this is why it's, it's important to lose because you need to get the, the first prior, right? Because someone, someone else might take the tier and <laughs> that'd be really fucking bad for us. So the issue with making it here is it might make it too strong. So we probably don't want to make it yet, but it's going to make it very easy to beat Crocs, basically. But if you make it now, you might win your fights and we kind of want to lose your fights, right? We can just wait. You can also make it on like a sieve if you want to. Uh, we always make it. There's no way we're not making it. So like, so you can just make it if you want to, but you can also just wait. There's no like, yeah, the 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 same option in this case. Now it's locked in. Some there are some some augments in some regions that like let you split items again, but those are like they make the game a lot harder to play. <laughs> it's a close fight, right? Yeah, but Volibear is like he's a three cost. He heals a lot. He gets really scary in some spots. You can build him so he, he's basically unkillable. There are some boards that cannot kill a, a well built Volibear basically. Yeah, these encounters they added these this set. So sometimes you can see in the top right, the stage there's like this little swirl. Every time there's one of those something different like different to normal because some like something else is going to happen in this case you're getting pulled into arena and then something happens sometimes it's this where you just get bigger sometimes it's like you get a lot of items uh, sometimes it makes rerolls cost less stuff like that and sometimes they're on carousels then you get an extra item on the carousel or like it's, they change something about the game in some way i think you want to you want to deliberately play the extra cogmo here over the chogath too if you can you want to get weak as weak as possible so the chogath too is too strong basically so this makes you a lot weaker and you could front line the cogmo so this is the last round the last round is the most important one to lose because if you win this one, your whole streak goes. If you win earlier, you just play a stronger board and save some HP. But this one's like eight gold difference. It's like a small augment. It's like fine. You can save another another HP. You kill another unit here. But we're in a really good spot here. I think we're gonna avoid talking about like other units and stuff. Like currently, we just like gonna stay in the lane and then see if we win. Where end up with it? And you can buy upgrades and play around, except for Crocs. But I think this is gonna work so often that we don't care about it. If you put the Caitlyn on the board, you should just win this for free. I think Chogath two you just win. If you have a Malphite two or Chogath two or Cogmo two, you probably always win this if you position like this. You want to swap Malphite and Chogath, but it's not that important. And now we're like, this this time you just smoke him. Like, it's not going to be close. So with, with blue buff on Cogmo, he's already doing 50% more damage, right? So you can see how items are going to be super important for the setup. You're going to run another item that gives you another 50% damage, and then you're running a third item that gives you like 20%, 30%, like 30 more damage. So you get like a Cogmo that does multiple times his normal damage, which is like, it's just, that's pretty good for for, <laughs> for, the, for the normal reasons, right? And another item we're really interested in, if you right click on um, on the cloak or the rod, either one, you want the, uh, the Ionic spark we can try and read what it does one on chogath is the main tank the reason that's really insane because your whole board just does a lot of magic damage oh yeah we want to roll now while we're before until like 40 40 gold and then we just go back to 50 afterwards oh, yeah, really nice you have uh, two units on your bench you don't need you can sell those and draw a bit more but you don't like it's not important yeah we sell him we don't need him he's, he might show up later but he's not going to be here for so long your level five board doesn't have him and you're going to be level five for the next five rounds at least so we'll just wait around you want the one on the right so we can roll the two ones on the left let's do um I think it's probably part. I think Exiles is more fun. Exiles, you have to play around it. So let's just click Exiles and then you can like, then the, read Exiles real quick. Just want to make sure we don't lose Econ here, which we don't. I guess this is fine. You can also go 40 now. We were still looking for one specific unit here and now we stop again. And just like anything on the board here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter much at least. We're just trying to stay above 50 because 50 is the highest you can go for interest. So if you're above 50 gold, you gain five extra gold of interest. If you if you hover the gold in the middle, you can see the gold in the middle. Right? It says the different intervals. Interest max five. So we're just trying to like, because we're still some gold away from getting to our, our actual power spike. We're just sitting on 50 gold to get as much gold as possible to try and get there faster. So you can see this game, you're winning a lot more fights. The blue buff makes a big difference and you hit Chogath too this time you didn't last time. And the board's like doesn't take that much damage stage three, which is really nice. And it caps really high. You often get to go 
go nine with this. Most of my games, I get to go level nine, which is like the end game, end game. Uh, it's usually Nico. We'll have to find one. Because it gives you a mythic and heavy, which is really nice. So these are weird, right? So to this game, you're playing exiles, which makes it hard to group stuff. So these do like, you can see they, they buff people besides them. Some of them do. So you could probably just take the, you can take Seeks or Gem here. I think Seeks is probably better, but Gem is also completely fine. Because you don't really care about the shield on your backline, because your backline is going to, like the backline shield doesn't matter, basically. You probably put that on Caitlyn. Because she's going to stay backline. You don't care about her either. It's not a problem for you that she's backline. Really. She's going to be there for the rest of the fight. And uh, this is like the, uh, it's going to be, if you hit, so this is the game plan. And then at some point around like 4 1. So you can see a 3 3 at the top, right? Every stage starts on like 3 1 or 4 1 or 2 1. And then it goes to like 3 7, which is the neutral round, the round before the neutrals. And, and then after that, you repeat for the next stage. Stage 4 is usually, start stage 4 is usually when you hit the rest of your units. So you're going to be around like stage 4, you're going to be Kogma 3, Chogra 3, and looking to push levels, basically. That's the, that's the like the expected pace of the comp. Sometimes you hit before, sometimes you hit later. So now, now we have the tiers, right? So now what do we want now? If you go and look at your item bench, if you click the thing in the middle, we want a tier or a cloak. Cloak's probably the best one. Yeah. Glove is also fine, but cloak's probably the best one. You're playing a lot cleaner than last game too. Moving around units. I think Kotsu mentioned you put in the Cho'Gath without me mentioning it after we took it out and stuff like that. Right? You're already doing like a lot of the basic micro stuff. Yeah, she's also a frontliner. So you can just like dump her in the front too. He's actually fine to have in the back. So if you read his ability, Nico's also, he's also cool. You could like reading the units abilities is like, it's going to take a while to get most of the units down, but legally knowing the abilities is quite valuable. You don't actually have to, but it helps really. We, uh, that's good. That's a good, that's a good take. Let's do that. Let's look through the abilities in the units. We do Nico. Damage reduction is pretty powerful, but you often don't get Nico 3, sadly. So Malphite's pretty interesting. You think he's interesting to read here for uh, just like the wording of it. Because it actually makes your current position a lot better than it's supposed to be. Attacks deal magic damage. So he's an on-hit unit, basically. Like he's a tank that's an on-hit unit, and you don't really care about his you don't really care about him often. Like it's just nice he's there. But here you have a Seeks that gives 30 percent attack speed for free. And he's at this point in the game, he's a lot of your power. If you check the damage, if you go top right, the very top right, there's like a two swords. You can click those. Exactly. So you can see Malphite just did nearly the same damage as a cog one with no setup while also being a tank. So like early game and early three stars very powerful and getting it with the um the seeks here is pretty nice because he's an on hit unit really. Yeah, you can sell the ribbon. You sell the ribbon here. You have a ribbon on the bench. But going below 40 is fine. You'd rather buy than not buy it. Legally, we're supposed to, like like you're playing now where you're sitting above 40. You're supposed to do that with 50, but it's like it doesn't matter much. It's like in the future we do we stay in 50 because it's an extra goal of the turn. It's the same idea, just 50 instead of 40 as the barrier. That's gonna be uh, when you get like <laughs> if you, when you when you get like more like energy to like think about the fights, you're gonna see him missing a lot in, in, in spots where it's important he doesn't, and you're gonna be pissed about it. But that's uh, that's a fair bit away. <laughs> I've yelled about that multiple times today already. Fuck that guy. I like the combat. Size is good here, but it's hard to fit him on the board. So you can't really we can't really play it. Yeah, we just uh, we just keep going here. Oh holy shit. Yoink. It's a good fucking shot. Uh, we can make items too, yeah. Yeah, so we're making a gargoyle's probably now you get extra items so we can check and maybe build something different depending on what the items are we get here. We got that's really good. Okay. Just sell everything that's not the things we want. You can make a Nash's tooth on Cogworm. That's the that's the best item on him. Like that's the best item on the comp. Eh, it's not sure. Yeah, exactly. I think Spark's the best item on the comp, but it doesn't matter. Nash's tooth is really good on Cogworm, yeah. So now he's gonna do an extra fifty percent damage on top of what he's already doing. And then you can make gargoyles and choke out. Your item's actually really good this game. Um, which is not a guarantee. You often end up with awkward items, but this game you have like, your items are basically perfect. It's really, really nice. It's gonna make you a lot stronger than you're supposed to be. Like if you let's read let's read gargoyles real quick too. That's on the uh, the choke out. It also makes it so you're having him targeted is now better than before. So if you can put him like in the slightest exposed area, you don't hate that because you get extra stats for every unit targeting. Him. Like a lot of these items change the way you're supposed to play around the unit. You probably want the one in the middle. So we'll roll everything else. We just get the one in the middle. I just keep going with the rolling. Yeah, we're pretty close. You only need three of each. We're gonna get there soon. And now we can like, yeah, yeah we'll just stay. We'll just, you're still so high HP that we can just go slow, right? We don't have to send it yet. We can stay 40, yeah. I think staying 50 or 40 is completely fine. Right? We're just sitting and hanging out. Like you're too healthy to like be scared, right? So the, so the way we're trying to play this currently, normally you would do, imagine you're like 20 HP, you're dying in two. If you die, lose two rounds, you die, right? Then you start rolling to zero because you want to hit your units to try and win a few rounds. But right now we have, we still have so much HP, you can go super slow here, which means you can play for cap basically. So like if you if you start going zero, you lose all your interest intervals. So you're down four gold a turn, five gold a turn for the rest of the game basically. Instead of that, because if you don't take damage or you have the HP to do it, you can just sit on high HP though, like on high gold the whole game. And then you're going to outscale people that couldn't do that basically. So if you're not pressured, you might as well just greet the gold, which is what we're trying to do this game. One thing that's also really nice about this setup is like if you hit the three star, you cannot see them in your shop anymore. Caitlyn, Cho'Gath, and Malphite don't exist in your shops anymore, which makes the chance of hitting Cogmore a lot higher. Right? We're going to get to the late game board this game, probably, which is really nice. You have a lot of shield in this combo. All your Orgrim shield you, but they're, they're pretty powerful. So, combo cast is really nice because Cogmore casts a lot. Normal, some of your frontline casts a lot too. It's just generically, combo cast is quite strong. It's a lot of HP. And then Exiles has a lot of HP too. It's just upfront tankiness. And then Epitaph is the same thing. Like it's, you have a lot of defensive Orgrim, which is really nice because Cogmore actually wants, if you read Cogmore
also has specific targeting and he gets more range per every second cast. It's one of the reasons we wanted to cast as much. Because you can kill the carries without killing the front line, which is quite powerful in a lot of matchups. So it's either a tank or a defensive item. And here is a tank item, basically. You can get so the two options here if you go and check the bow item. You could do redemption and you could do Nashers with tier and the thing. With two Nashers on Cogmo is probably actually the best setup. Blue of double Nash is probably the best Cogmo setup. So we wouldn't mind that. And then here we just make redemption because redemption is one of the best items on Jogath, specifically with this build. If you don't have a D clock, redemption is insane. If you have a D clock, it's slightly worse because you already have a healing source. But like this Jith Choga is not dying for like a while. If you hit the Cogmo 3, you're in an insane spot. Like, at, if you were in a lobby where you're pressured, I would roll more, but you're not. So we just stay 40. Like legally, you're one off a turbo spike, but like you don't care because you're so strong, it doesn't matter. So this if you check the damage, if the Choga is going to do the same damage as the Cogmo while also tanking him with infinite. Like he's just he does a lot for your board. I guess he's getting slightly outperformed here. His AoE setup was not good enough, but he's really scary. He's very hard to kill. Redemption gives him healing over time too. So like he basically just cannot die currently. Probably no one in the lobby with enough damage to kill him. We just say the gold here. The maneuver, the remover is too much, uh too much isn't that probably. We'll probably want to go a bit deeper here than normal. We'll go on 30 this time. Because you're getting level six next turn. Um, and it, it reduces your odds at one cost a lot. So you want to hit the cock before you get to that point. Exactly. That's really good. Yoink. So that's the main game plan. Like now we're done with the main game plan. This is like the first thing that happens. Usually you're done with this at like four one instead of four six, but that's just how it goes sometimes, right? This is how it went this game. Your items are really good. Um you had you have your units. So the next thing we're doing is we're, we're putting mulls like a lot of other units in. If you look at the left, there's like some of these traits we care about. Mostly we're playing mythic. So both Cockmore and Cho'Gath and Mythic units. Getting extra Mythic in is pretty nice, but you don't get anything out of it unless you have two extra slots, right? So the next time we can play an extra, like, the extra Mythic breakpoint is not common before level 7 here. So there's no, we can't get to 5 Mythic before level 7 because we're not dropping any of the units on our board. So so what do we play next level, on level 6, when we can't get an extra Mythic unit, like an extra mi Mythic breakpoint? We're trying to find a unit, uh, we're trying to find a Lowy because she gives us both Arcanist and Ghostly, which is really nice. But we don't want to roll for it. We just want to like sit and sit slowly and level slowly, basically. We just wait, yeah. But if you look at the, the left side, you have Arcanist and Ghostly and Invoker. You can try and find one of those in your shop. If you get that trade in, it makes you stronger. Right? So if you find any of those, you get you get stronger. Because you can go from one out of two to two out of two, right? And get the bonus. Arcanist is probably the best one. They sell for the same. They they buy forces. So easy to just buy stuff and have it and then sell when you don't need it. I think you just want to level here, actually. So this is this is atypical. This is because you got a wave. Um, you want to level next turn normally. So if you can level and be above 30 gold, you're basically always level. Here we can nearly do that. You can stay above you stay above 20, but you get way in, which is really important. Let's put way on the board. So he's he's pretty interesting too. If you write, he's a legendary. So legendaries have like weird weird extra effects you can see he has he's mythic and an artist he's the only artist in the game but it does something weird if you read it it does we'll, we'll get to do it next turn it's a lot easier to like figure out and practice but it's just going to show on your bench but he prints extra units for you which is pretty strong so we're just going to print a lot of nikos and hopefully get a niko three later in the game he's just going to print those while we wait for like levels to come in and then you have an extra open slot so you have two nikos on the board because you leveled and they just put something in but you have a tk on the bench at tom kench which is also mythic so you get five mythic here so we'll just take that that's why we level because we get five mythic which is really nice any any of the Nikos here is fine, but preferably the one star one. You should be pissed chill on this game. Your board's really, really good. This usually is enough to get a top four. This guy's not really. I really was really good for his board, but you'd be chilling. So we're looking to like make the last Cockmo item because we're currently running two item carry. We can run a three item carry instead, which makes it a lot stronger. Right? So we have an anvil available. Those are often something you get later in the game, but they let you choose. They, they show you four components and you get to choose one of them. So it shows you half the components in the game on random and you can like try and tailor. Like if you're lucky, you hit the one you want. Right? It's 50 50. They're quite powerful. We have an open glove. If you go and right click the glove on the bench on the item bench to the left right you get to see the list of items you can make with it so like we'll try to figure out what we want and then we'll do the anvil and the two options here are like jg jewel gauntlet's fine and then gap breaker is okay thieves gloves is also okay but thieves gloves goes on like nico instead which is fine so we'll, we'll pop the anvil and then look for one of those like a glove or a yes yeah, so you just sell it and then it opens the armory we want rod but but glove is fine too and belt is fine too and then there's only the gloves so we'll take the glove and we put on so this is a this is an interesting item so it, it takes up all the item slots on a unit on its own but it lets you only run two items you can't choose those items so like it's not good in your main carry but it's quite good on just like random units because it gives a lot of power especially if you have a unit like nico that uses both tank items and uh, ap items really well which means like we're very willing to just give her that basically you probably want the way here because way to win you the game so instead of just caring about anything we just take way two here because the unit is just really really strong and the two star wins you the game on the spot he does the same damage as cockmore and he does more damage than cockmore he also heals your board for like an insane amount at the same time he's just insanely powerful you can yeah you can put on, on the other nico if that makes sense at the very at the very top he's, he's 
of top, top, top. Yeah, exactly. And then we put TK in over the other Nico. Then you get five myth again, which is nice. Tom Kench over the the Nico that's not with the item on it. And then you get five myth again, which is really nice. So I'm going to show you after we're done with this game, I'm going to show you a spreadsheet I made, but there's like a lot of this information I'm giving you is just in the spreadsheet. It's, it also like details what board you're supposed to play later and like stuff like that. At this point, I can show it to you and it makes it makes some sense probably. It's mostly Dix Comp often hits Cogmo 3 and Choker 3. And if your items are good, it just kind of looks like this. Like you're just very strong for a long time. For such a long time, you can make it to level nine. That's usually the, the way you try and play the game. And then when you get way to, you can win the game on, on nine basically. And like you can go first if you get there fast enough. So that's the game plan. You try to hit this early enough that you can just get there fast. You just kind of wait. We want to go very slow. Um, so we, we want to level, but we don't want to level if it puts us below like 30 gold basically. But if you stay above 30 gold, you want to level. If you sell the just down on the volleyball and the Nara, maybe there's no. As long as you stay above 50 gold, there's no, it doesn't cost you anything to check. So you can see how close you get basically. You're going to play a few games and that's going to stop happening. So like, don't sweat the small stuff at the start. It's going to happen a bunch of times. It just doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. We'll be fine. We'll just put anything in. Ghostly, Bruiser, Arcanist, all good. You can buy Nautilus in the shop. He's on, the, I haven't shown the end game board, but he's on the end game board. He's a mythic unit. He has a big stun and he targets on the biggest amount of units. So he just, he's usually very valuable because he just, he just stops their carry from doing stuff for a second and a half, which is really, really nice. So uh, you play him over TK. That's the end game. You can move the uh, Nico onto the left. So it's start, it's going to start copying again on the, on the bench. I mean, you need to, uh, you need on the like swirly hex. If it's on their way, it's going to like duplicate it basically. That's what we want to put it. So it, it, you slowly get more of them until you hit the three star. The game's probably going to end before that point, but like, eh, that's way too acquire. That guy's such a fucking menace. And like, yeah, you're like, you, you're welcome to just like make decisions and stuff. Like, like you can just sell whatever. Worst case, you sell something we needed, but it doesn't matter. Like, we're just here to test stuff out. So if you think it's supposed to be sold, you just kind of sell it. And I'll tell you if, if something bad happened. But like, legally, there's no consequence to anything playing it. We dropped an, an item anvil this time. So that's basically like an anvil, but it's slightly different. It just gives you full items to choose from instead of components. You can, we're looking for a last cockmore item. So we're looking for like an AP item or like Nasher. So like, if you see something that looks like an AP item, it's probably an AP item. Like Arkan is an AP item. So we'll just take that. Legally, that's one of the worst ones, but like, we'll just take any item here. It makes them a lot stronger. We'll get a lot more damage in. Look at this choke. I'm still not dying, by the way. The guy's such a beast. He's also running some healing here. So he has a redemption, which like, you can see it once in a while. It procs and heals him, but it also gives him damage reduction. And redemption is very good as a last tank item because it scales the other items really well. Damage reduction and healing when you're already tanky is really, really nice. You can just level here. Like, you're staying about, you're just staying about 50 gold every time. Right? You can get like Arcanist if you want to. So level nine is the last level you're ever going to get this game. So you could just go nine if you want to. It's like, there's nothing to use your gold on but go nine, basically. So like, you already made it to nine. So like, there's not much to use gold on left. And you just put like whatever in. And we have an item on bench. We can try to figure out where to put. So we have a Gargos just on the bench. So we have any tanks without items. Currently, we have a Nautilus who's a tank in the front line. So we can try to give that to him, maybe. It's just like at any point. Like, it's not like important, important. Just like, we're just doing like, I'm trying to not to overwhelm too much. We're just doing like a lot of small stuff. We're doing it slightly slowly. Illegally, you're supposed to split, but it's not that important. But you can like, so currently, Huey is next to Nico. It works. Adjacent means all the way around. You kind of have to move way down if you want the, the value on Nico to, but then it works, right? Now you get their value on everything but the units that are clumped. You can see the shield here, actually. So you, you get you get to the start of the fight, you can see who gets the shield and who does not. So you see the front, they get the shield, right? So now you made it to nine. This is how the comp looks at the end game. It's like you're down, you only need, there's like a few changes to the end game, but it's not that important. Like there's a few good units you haven't seen yet. Like Wukong gives the whole board attack speed, which is really powerful. So if you see a Wukong, we want him. Elawi gives Arcanist and Ghostly. So if you've seen Elawi, you'll probably buy that too. You can take Lissandra if you want to. Lissandra's fun. So she puts people in a teacup uh, and then if they die while in it, they can it is a 50 percent chance it's going to give you loot which is often half an item sometimes it's gold so that's pretty powerful too that's the wukong yeah you have it so you're currently six out of five mythic which means we can drop a mythic unit without feeling bad about it so we just take tk out and put wukong in basically good read good read and then he gives you more heavenly and you now you're three out of three out of seven heavenly but he, his specific so heavenly is weird it's based on the specific unit you see wukong gets attack speed which is just really good all your units now attack faster which means they do more they cast more often which is the main important part stuff like that right? every time you attack you get mana so if you look at where Every time he attacks, he gets mana here. 10 mana, 10 mana, 10 mana. So attack speed just makes him cast more. And he's he's pretty important for the board. It also gives Cock more, more casts, etc. So that's why Wukong's insane. Yeah, way he's doing that big circle on the board and heals your teammates. He's just super powerful. So that's like, legendaries are quite strong generically. So that's how the, the, the game works, basically. I'll show you a spreadsheet real quick. And uh, I'll try to do even less backseating in the next game. I'll try to like, you now know the basic game plan. You should be able to like slightly execute it. So I made a tier, I made some tiers of stuff. Give me a second, I'll share my screen real quick. This is the, I'll, I have the link to the spreadsheet here too. Um, there's some advanced stuff in here we're not going to yap out anytime that soon but like this is the main game plan right? you're going for Cogmore Cho'gath Malphite Kaelin and Nico, and you only uh, start leveling when you hit the Cho'gath 3 and the Cogmore 3 and you only put items on these two basically Cogmore and Cho'gath 3 item carries this is, an, uh, this is a weird like 
like tier list, but this is basically the items you care about on Kogmo and Cho'Gath. And then you put the AP items on Kogmo. Like if it's a Rabadon, it's a Kogmo. And if it's a tank item like Vow, it's on Cho'Gath. But this is the rough prior of like how interested you are in these items. You see, Arkin is not very good. Legally, you can take it, but you're not that interested in it. Whereas Declaw, Redemption are both very good tank items. Spark's the best one. Blue Buff is very good. Blue Buff and Shoujin do the same thing. This gives you 10 less mana. So you go from 30 to 20 mana, which is powerful. It lets you do two auto attacks for a cast instead of three. So it's 50% more cast. This does the same thing, except it gives you five more mana per auto attack. So you go from 15, you go from zero to 15 to 30, which is also two autos. But Blue Buff is just slightly stronger if you're casting at the same speed. So this is a better item if you if you get the same amount of autos out of them. Uh, this is why we're that interested in Blue Buff, but mostly we're interested in Asher's. Shoujin is actually quite good too. The reason we prior tier so highly, even though it's not the best item, is both Redemption and Vow and Adaptive and Blue Buff all use a lot of tiers. So if you have a lot of tiers, it's just never a problem. You always have a good spot to put them. So you cannot get too many sp uh, tiers. Another reason tier is good is because it kills sword. There's only two sword items here, basically. Three sword items. Giant Slayer, Gunblade, and Shoujin all use one sword. And sword is a bad component in the comp. So one of the reasons Shoujin is good is because it lets you kill a sword. Because you don't get the you don't get to ever make that into another component. So you're just stuck with that component forever. You you'll try to get something useful out of it. But the only useful items you can make are these, which again makes tier more valuable because tier makes the sword better, basically. The sword's hard to get value out of. So we're trying to make these items. And you can like the way you probably end up doing this if you do it on your own is like you look at the items you get on the bench at the start, you right click and you try to see which one of these items, which like what's the best item I can look for on the carousel, basically. And it's often just going to be one of these three are often available. Like belt, belt, bow, rod, cloak, tier. So if you have one of those five, you can look for one of these in the first carousel and instantly get quite strong. The main baseline takes for like the comp, the complete beginner guide for, for a one cost comp is like you don't level before, you don't ever buy XP before your three star tank and damage dealer. So in this case, it's Kogmo and Cho'Gath. When you're three star them both, you can start leveling. You usually start leveling the moment you do and you don't look for the other units. You just maybe find them later. They'll, they'll slow up probably. Right? And then you have to lose in the first stage to get uh, item prior. So stage two, you have to intentionally lose. So you just want to put Kogmo on the front line and lose fights. It's super important. Uh, even though we care about Nico, this is like, this is a slightly advanced thing people haven't done for that. Like I still see like master players make this mistake, but like Nico is a two cost and she's often too expensive for you to hold stage two because you want to make 10, you want to make 20, you want to make 30. Like getting these intervals is super important because it snowballs really heavily. And so the early goal is so important that you, even if you find Nico early, you sell her just to make, if it makes you an extra interval. So if it gets you from like eight to 10 gold, you always just sell her. Um, you also do the same with Caitlyn actually. We don't care that much about Caitlyn. We care more about the gold. Uh, it depends. If you have a lot of Caitlyn's, you can keep it because then you're guaranteed to hit it. But if you have more Cogmos than Caitlyn, just always sell Caitlyn to make 10. Uh, we don't care that much about it. And then you just stay on level five, never buy XP, and just stay above 50 gold at all times, right? We did it that game. You stayed above 40, which is the same principle. It's just 50 gives you one extra gold a turn. So just do the same thing, but like index on 50 instead of 40. This is like a good rule of thumb. If your HP gets low enough, like 18 to 27 HP, and you haven't hit yet, just roll until you run out of gold because you need to hit now. Right? You're just, you're on like time, you're on a timer anyways. So you're just trying to like save, like win a few rounds before you die anyway. So you can like get a sixth instead of an eighth because that's still a lot of placements. It's like, if you're close to dying, start spending all your gold. Like fuck interest, fuck level nine, fuck all that. Just spend your gold to get stronger. Right? The same goes for like the level up stuff. If you already hit the units and you're dying, you might as well just level even though it fucks your econ. Because at that point, you don't, like, you just need to not die. And leveling gives you an extra unit on the board which makes you stronger. Right? The generic game plan is just, yeah, go level five, roll until you hit. If you hit, you start leveling. Every time you can level and stay about 30 gold, you just level. If you stay about 30 gold, it doesn't cost you anything. It's just a math thing. Like you go from 50 to 40 gold and then you get 10 gold and it's turn you back to 50. So it costs you one gold to go to 40 gold. Going to 30 gold costs you three gold because you go from 30 to 40 to 50. So you lose two gold when you're 30 instead of 50 and then you lose one gold when you're 40 instead of 50. If you go below 30, you lose a fuck ton of gold. So we don't want to go below 30 if we can help it basically. So 30 is like pretty cheap to go to and going to 20 costs you like six gold instead of three gold. Like it gets a lot more expensive. Going zero costs you like fucking 25, 30. Like it's, it gets way expensive. So we try to stay slightly healthy in econ. I think we run it back and then this time I'm going to try to like ask you about what items you want to make and we'll talk about the decisions basically. And I'll try to still keep it pretty light. I think if you can like, if you can have the tier, I'll, I'll send the tier list as a picture to you on Discord. You can try and look at that basically. Looking at the item tier list is like an easy way to, uh, I did my first climb just playing one combo only and like just reading from a tier list. And it's basically just like this. I was just looking at the items and I just clicked whatever, made whatever I could. And I'll try to like let you make a lot of decisions this time. You know, like the bear, you've seen how it works, how it plays out, where we end up. So the last normal game before we start playing ranked, you should be fine for ranked already. Like legally, um, if you play like you did last game, you're gold already. The main thing about getting gold is just building real items on real on units that can use them and then playing a real comp. If you get that down, you're probably already planned. That's what I'm trying to teach you as fast as possible at least. I think I'll, uh, I'll go for a piss and grab some uh, <laughs> some lunch real quick. I think you're fine. So uh, I think I think you get through this on your own. Well, uh, we'll see. Right? Like legally, legally chats got you this. Uh, I, was I think you'd be fine. Listen, like, like, yeah, you got the game plan down last game. That looked pretty uh, pretty promising, right? So, or oh, you start with a choker, two plus one, not bad. But uh, I'll be back in like two minutes. I think you're fine. Just yeah, just make sure you play the amount of units you
I was about to say, I think you're at the point where you can start choosing open to your own, actually, which is like, yeah, like they're, they're weird. And there's a way to like consistently choose the right ones. But I think just like reading them and then looking at them and be like, this is probably okay. A good place to start. You click the best one, it seems, right? So like the other options were not clickable. I like that. You can already make a Nash share. So the reason we don't want to do that is just because we, because we want to lose, right? Um, but other than that, Nash is great. It's a really good item, right? We know it's insane. So the best item set up in Kogma is actually two Nashers and a blue buff. So we can try and make two Nashers this game because you have, a, you already have one, right? You're, you're halfway to another one with the bow. So we might even have to, we might even get to play double Nasher this game. So some items you can't put on the same unit, but a lot of items you can put multiples off. And this, uh, in this case, we can make a, uh, two of them but some items you can but they're mostly often like utility items yeah we buy we buy it so it doesn't cost you anything like because you stay above 10 gold here and you can make it to 20 anyways so it's free it just depends on like the 10 the 10 intervals so we always just buy because we get to hold it for free we're very interested but if it makes us gold to sell it we'll sell it yeah yeah it's because you'd, you'd end up making items all the time you didn't want to make. Uh, currently, the, the way you saw that is just you buy one unit and make it there. Right? Like, or you put, just buy like Vexine, put it on Vexine, and then you make it that way. I think, yeah, like, yeah. Like, you could just buy units and sell them again. It's completely cheap for you to do, basically. So you buy Kindred and sell it, you get the two gold back instantly. It never costs you anything. It sells for the same it buys for. Um, so you can just, like, buy stuff for fun and then sell it for fun. The only time it ever costs you money to buy units is if you make a two star. If you make a two star, it sometimes costs gold to do. So, like, a one cost, you make a two star one cost, like, if you combine three Vexines, they become the bigger x that still sells for three gold so it doesn't even cost you gold to do but if you combine three kinetic like three nikos for example the two cost it doesn't sell for six it only sells for five so if it's like above a one cost it costs one gold to combine you can combine anything else or buy everything else but the moment it's like a two cost and above making the two star costs one gold basically but you can just buy stuff in shops for fun like it's not scary at all so you have a reforge which is a utility item and since legally there's not a single item you want that's a sword you could just reforge sword already if you want to which is quite nice here you have to do it on the it's like building an item so you have to do the same thing you do otherwise right this just lets you like ditch the yeah, the sword. So that's the second worst component. <laughs> it's a slightly unlucky, but but it's still better than the sword, so we don't mind. That's still completely fine. So what are we trying to make here? So you can see at the top the carousel's coming in. So you get to choose, look for something. What are we looking for? Yeah, tier's a great thing to look for. If you get tier bell, that'd be ooh. <laughs> Yoink. Exactly. That's a good read. We're looking for tier and belt. We got both. That's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty fucking good. We yeah, we like that a lot. But it's sometimes like that. Sometimes you get insane setups on carousel. It's one of the like at higher elos, sometimes you have to deny people because one option is just too good for one guy. Um, and like if you don't care much on your and like for your own game and stuff like that yeah you can yeah. You still have to lose it. You still want to lose it. Yeah. Now you're quite strong. You probably want to put Cockmore in the front line now. I think you're going to win if you don't. It's, the Cho'Gath guy is just too strong. And then the game's going to force you to play four units. So it's going to put something in, but that's like fine. I think we just make it. That's fine, yeah. We'll just play Piss Cockmore here. We can commit to it. So legally, legally, this reduces the options you have available if you drop components later. Like you have less options now, right? Because you're not using it. So like in theory, this is bad. But at the start, you're just supposed to do this. Just make the items. Get it out of your head so you don't have to think about it later. It simplifies a lot of decisions, which is worth a lot to you. Like even at the high level you're supposed to like roll early on neutrals because you cannot make the turn that fast you need you need the time basically so like you're rolling before you like before you need to because you can't roll fast enough stuff like that it's very normal selling like you can buy a lot of units have them on your bench it gives you a lot of options a lot of lines available if you hit the right pieces but often like it's just, there's a saying in tfte that goes like clear bench clear mind which is basically what you're doing with the items like thinking about the game is just hard enough that like simplifying decisions is often worth a lot to you um, so like making the items here is is, is actually probably probably good to do even though it legally reduces your options available like i wouldn't do it but like <laughs> you're still you're still pretty far away like pretty pretty far on my, pretty far away from from getting to that point where that matters yeah, yeah, yeah. the blue is really good here you could do shojin too um if you drop a sword and no tier on neutrals you'll just kill the sword with the shojin because you don't know other way to kill a sword but that's like an item econ thing it's like the sword's impossible for you to get use out of unless it's a gunblade or a shojin currently you don't have can you cannot make gunblade because you need blue buff or a shojin on kogma he needs one man item because one man item is always just 50 percent damage it's just too good oh, no! a beast but like not a joke that's actually uh, yeah. <laughs> the chat's on it they agree that's a clean line that's not an that's not an obvious move i don't think people would always get that just instantly move for neutrals you can slam the nashers now if you want to you can lose this because you have choke earth too but you might as well just make them now they're starting to believe i think you're plat by uh, by next week i think that could be true you can just you can just make it yeah you just put it on him he's a beast but yeah with choke earth too you don't lose even with no items we see it here right? if you have choke earth too you don't lose but like your does double the damage now <laughs> holy fuck okay it's fucking over <laughs> it's fucking over have fun you won the game congrats <laughs> Not bad, not bad. We'll take it. So this is level four. So you want to roll to 40, but then you want to stay 50 afterwards. The reason we, I guess I, you should stay 50, I think. We'll talk about the other stuff later. It's like needlessly complicated. It doesn't do much. So just stay above 50 gold. Iron wise, I don't think it's in the tier. I should have put it in the tier list maybe. But one thing you can do is make a TG again because it just kills the gloves really quickly, which is nice. Because you, you can just put it on like Nico or like Malphite and then it, it gives them items for fun, right? Which is nice. It's an easy way to get rid of gloves because there's no like good glove. There's like one good glove item on Cockmore and there's one good glove on the, like, but like uh, we don't care much about it. Like this is an 
easy way to go to low value and fast. Yeah, but it also gives a mythic emblem, which gives plus one to mythic, which is not necessarily bad, right? Because you are playing a lot of mythics. It means you can get to like sell in mythic and stuff like that. But like you just like, I think like this doesn't matter much. Like there's a right and a wrong answer more or less, but I haven't told you how to like choose and you haven't played enough to get a, like you don't have a feeling for it yet. So just choose whatever you want to, yeah. You can also roll and look for other stuff that you want to. But like, I just, yeah, this doesn't matter much. Just like, I think just like looking at the opens and reading them and thinking about them is good. I'm just going to let you make a decision because like, I think you thinking about it is important basically. You can make, yeah, you have an item on bench you can make on the, on the choke if you want to. So if you look at the, uh, so currently we're not getting, hmm, the level five board is also with Nico on it. So you need to figure out how to get Nico on the board here. So the cool thing about Nico is she gets you the mythic, right? So if you read the mythic thing, it needs a few turns before it comes online completely. Um, so you need to have mythic in for like four turns before you get the full value. So like some of the advanced stuff we're going to talk about later is like, if you find an early Nico in stage two, you often play Nico stage two to get early mythic stacks and stuff like that. It, at the moment, it doesn't matter at all. It's, it's too, like it's, it, there's no reason to think about it at all. Just set about 50 and slow roll and you'll be fine. Yeah, this is like you can see the ball. Like you haven't hit the three stars yet, but you're still fine. Like you're killing a lot of units. You're gonna win this fight too. Kogmo's pumping. He's a beast. This is like this is what the comp does. And then when you if you keep if you win this stage and you hit early next stage, you're just gonna win all the way to nine. This also works in high. Like I play this comp like forty percent, thirty five percent of my games. And they're gonna slightly nerf it next patch, which is tomorrow, but it's a very minor nerf. Like, so you're probably not gonna feel it at all. It's probably still gonna be very strong. And it's gonna be a very decent like one trick for sure. We have no we have no current like current direction. We have no components, but there is just a choke guy with a cloak on it. And cloaks are quite good defensive item um, so normally you want to take the high cost units but on average finding one choga is going to cost you like 10 gold 8 gold depending on how many there's out so this is just this is worth a lot to you basically so if we look at the if we look at the um, the tier list we see in the uh, in the at the top of the a tier there's a d cloak which is just two cloaks and the sparks also one cloak so like ideally you have three cloaks in your choga um, so the cloak's very good yeah you can use a lot of cloaks exactly and when they're three star they become golden often so he changes you can see the choga that's on the board is also slightly silver compared to the one on the bench that's one star so you can like yeah there's also the health bar you can see there's a gold like border and like silver border and, and then a small bronze border so you can like quickly grasp the power of an enemy's board by like seeing how high their star levels are he's a lot stronger than the than the bronze the bronze guy exactly they get smoked your board's really good you have way better items too yeah. the the chat started believe they were skeptical when i said you could masters in a month but they're like yeah <laughs> you know what? This guy might fucking make it. Yeah, they believe, they believe. I believe too. Nah, you'll be fucking chilling. Like, it's mostly a knowledge check. And you can one trick all the way for free. You're a you quick learner. Like, this is going way quicker than expected. So. And I expected to go fast, but we're we're on, we're we're yeah, we're ahead of pace currently. I'll just let you, this is like a spot. I'll just let you make the decision on your own. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can see on the left, you can see you have a lot more than 50. So on the left, you can see how many interesting tools you're making. You can see you're making five. So you have more than 50 gold going. I think artifact, uh, artifact's fun. Because you don't know what an artifact is yet. We can just click artifact. I'll show you an artifact then. Just click the artifact so you can get to see what it is holy fuck <laughs> that's a shop yoink <laughs> that yoinky that's not bad that's not bad so this, this is a, a different type of items, basically. You cannot make these, but there are, some of them are really powerful. Yeah, so you can open it and see what you find and then like just read them. They're like, they they do weird stuff. So these are not that good because you don't have open. Like Mana Saint's quite good on Kog'Maw, but you don't have an, an item available in Kog'Maw. You could do Collector on Caitlyn, maybe. You could do like, there's like, there's some options. You could like Mana Saint because it wins the game later. If you get a Mana Saint on, um, on where you instantly win the game, there are some like setups, but you, but you play for way that game, but you can just do this, this is fine. Artifacts are quite powerful usually, but you did like some of the, some of the tank ones are really good. Um, you get one that's called Winter's Embrace. If you put it on Cho'Gath, every time someone attacks him, they attack 20% slower. And if they hit him eight times, they get stunned for like a second and a half, which is insanely powerful. It's like the best item in the game. It's it's, it's pretty dumb. Some of them are really good. Another one heals you like 2.5 HP is, percent HP a second on Cho'Gath, which is also really good. And some of them are really, really strong. Another one, like if your Cho'Gath gets hit 40, time, you, 40 times, you get two gold. Like some of them are, some of them are really, uh, really, really strong. Double Gargoyles is actually not bad. You can just go Gargoyles if you want to. Double Gargoyles and then Redemption would be really insane here. It would make you very strong. You end up with no spark, which is probably fine, which means we're going to look for it. And we, we won't think about that. That's fine. Like, not a joke. You're already like mid gold. With that, and like, yeah, we're just mid gold already. Skipping a lot of the like, like a lot of the like the hardest stuff is like figuring out how to build boards out of the stuff you find is like hard, which we solve by playing the same combat every game, right? Yeah, exactly, right? For the same reasons, right? We don't want you to think about how the unit works. We want you to think about like macro and we want you to think about lane states and it's the same thing here. Right? So, yeah, you just read them and then choose one. I think, yeah. We're not going to think too much about like the best ones. We're just going to let you like read them and think about them. It doesn't matter. It's like just reading and I think about them. It's the only thing that matters here. We'll, we'll, I'll teach you how to like get them later, like figure it out later. This is the opposite of exiles. You get more shielding if they're close to each other, basically. You can sell the, uh, the choke at the left because you already had the three star. There's no more left in the pool. Right? But it's also kind of fun to have one laying around because... <laughs> It also does make her stronger. She does more damage. She crits, higher AD, stuff like that. Yeah, one of the reasons we want to play one comp a lot at the start, at least, we could we could do more comps later, but especially if you get bored of it, because that's the main thing. Right? Being engaged is the main important thing. But the cool thing about one comp is you get to like learn items, 
you get to learn about like different econ timings and you get to think about positioning and you get time to like a lot of it's going to be autopilot pretty quickly like you've done at some point you've done this multiple times so there's a lot of this starts being second nature and you get to scout other people in the lobby you get to think more about your items you get to like look more for like think more about the augments stuff like that so you get to think about the stuff that works in every comp like item economy econ intervals all this stuff is relevant for every comp but if you keep changing comps you're just going to think a lot about what units you're buying and where you're putting them on the board and like what items they want you're going to think about a lot of stuff that doesn't translate well to like other comps and so we just want to do a lot of like the we want to teach you how the game works and then we'll start doing like flexing between different comps later by if you have to buy a way may like a lot of different units so like oh if you have this many of that unit you're playing that comp if you have this many of these units you're playing this comp it's, it's a lot it's a lot of it's a lot to take in but i think i did yeah i one tricked all the way to masters the first time i did it and i basically one tricked to challenger too i played two comps when i challenger i basically only played two comps like stuff like that right so you, you don't have to play like a wide wider range of comps you could like do it on just one for free you could try to it like maybe no one wants it it's not obvious they want it but it's on an Ophelios, which makes it hard to get you could take the lissandra here actually this is like slightly freestyling but you could take that because next level we want to so normally you play ilawi because she gives you arcanist and ghostly but we could just play lissandra for arcanist and she's a legendary so she can print you items that's her like her, her shtick yeah she does the where where she puts people to teapots oh another double shot oink you just level and put in lissandra and you're chilling you hit everything in. everything's three star now yeah exactly you can just put her in or you can put her right before behind you so she's she's two range actually so she's on the front line basically like so having her right behind gives extra shields here because you get per per unit so you put her there you get a lot of extra shields and then let's see if we can farm an item off her she's 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 pretty snowboardy if you get her early in the game and a ball that's strong you can farm an extra like like two items or something like it and it, it makes you a lot stronger but yeah we mostly just want to go levels now because we hit both the cop on the chogath so now we're just trying to like get to nine basically Ooh, she, did, she already dropped one right so that's already huge value like this is an unit's pretty good if you get it early that's one a component is roughly worth eight gold so she just drop your eight gold for fun and it also lets you cap higher right like if you end up with, with more items than others so basically the game gives everyone the same amount of items but if you're getting if you're getting items off the center you're just gonna have more items than other people which makes it really hard to beat you later on the game so this is just like a way to snowball really heavily the only thing you can do is like nico too we don't we just want to get to nine now we hit the cog when we hit the choga the moment those guys are three star we just want to get to nine and find way as fast as possible yeah, yeah you can yeah there's a few reasons not to but you you can yeah and you i just do that if it makes it easier just do that every time we'll, we'll get into the more advanced stuff way later it doesn't matter it's like it's it's so minor it doesn't matter some of these artifacts if you get them very early they can pump you a lot of gold in the game and that's a lot more important so the other ones have that for some reason the collector doesn't <laughs> but the other most of the other gold items do tell you how much you've made you've made five gold so far which is like pretty good actually for the, getting it this late in the game yeah. some of them are really really strong the best ones so on so on two one the very first start of the game the very start of the game the best one to get is diamond hands whenever you the unit you put it on gets to 50 percent hp you can like redemption here and you piss chilling the game's just over for fun the game was over anyways but it's, it's more of an hour right? Uh, there's a lot of stuff like you, yeah, at some point you're gonna slam the item on the wrong unit and you're gonna have like, end up putting a component on units you didn't want to and like I was telling you before what happens it's just gonna happen it also happens at high a lot putting the items on the wrong units is a very common thing <laughs> it usually comes from like playing too fast you want to dodge it if you can but like it just happens so often like it's just how it goes so so one thing we're lacking currently in this comp which is so there's two items in the game that give you shred which makes your magic down it basically just takes away it's just like void staff for the team basically think about like a void staff you usually want void one void staff if you can because right? the enemies are kind of build some armor on some magic assist and since you're doing mostly magic damage we're going to look for some shred there's two items in the game that let you have shred and it's spark which is the the str item and then shifts the other one the shifts pretty good but you don't want the shiv on the common one on the caitlin but you could build either here so the it depends on what you hit so both of your components build either shiv or spark and i think currently the best one is shiv because you, you, your tank is full already so you don't have a good spot to put the spark on but you can put the shiv on the caitlin which is a good spot to put up so you can try to figure out like what the spark is made of and what the shiv is made of and then like look for it. another reason tier is so good in this comp it's just it has so many uses and then you have an item members so you can like look for either one because the, the 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 last neutrals you miss both that's rough that's how it goes sometimes you just miss both that's life that's like a 30 percent to miss but that's fine it happens now we, you just make whatever i guess it's just, it's just yeah it's up to you you can do whatever you can do like a caden item if you want to actually you can look for a caden item it doesn't it doesn't matter exhaust pretty safe yeah yeah it's only bad for cobalt since you have a three star caden with an item already it's better than normal oh i think the sandra dropped an item maybe you get something good here yeah. <laughs> Yes, Dragon Claw's pretty good, but we don't have a good tank to put it on. Sadly, that's the problem. They're both full. Yeah, if you find like a, if you find like the guy later, maybe uh, in my head the guy is. What am I trying to say? If I like Nautilus later, you could put D Claw Nautilus, I guess. Right. So, so every turn the Thieves Gloves changes, and that's the thematic thing. It's the Thieves Gloves, so he goes out and steals items basically. So he leaves for a second to go and steal new items. So these two are like, yeah, he had those last turn too, but usually those swap every turn. So you you pay one item to get two random items, which is legally okay. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Right? But mostly you want to build 
with like three normal items. The reason three normal items are so good is because you get that they scale each other, right? So like the blue wolf makes your cock do 50% more damage and then the Nasher makes it do 50% more damage, but from his current point. So it's if you compare it to the damage you have with no item, it's, it's like plus 75% damage instead of 50%. Like, so they just scale each other, right? Nashers make the blue wolf worth more, etc. That's why TG is usually not that good, but the reason TG is, is like fine is because you, you have enough items to make two, three, si three item carries, but you don't have items enough to make three of them. You can make two, but not three, right? So TG is just an easy way to get more items on the board fast and quickly. You just take whatever. You can look for Caitlyn item. Um, I don't expect you to know what those are, but you can try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have an open slot on Caitlyn, you can do Gunblade, I guess, if you get there in time. If you don't get it, so, so it just gives you the highest cost if you don't get to choose, but this is, just put this in Lysander probably. That'd be fine. Yeah. So so this does, if you die, you you lose all acro, basically. It's just an acro drop, yeah, which is quite good on melee carries or units that are in the front line, but you don't want to die basically because you wanted to like stun stuff so you can farm more items and this makes it hard to, to for her to die no the damage doesn't matter at all she's uh, she's doing very little damage but she's stunning things for she's doing a three second stun and then she's also printing items which is why we have her she's a utility unit basically so we're not too bothered about it you can look look at Lysander here she's gonna pop the nico here oh i guess nico dies if you guys so you can see the teapot right and then she throws them away they die too early but if they don't die she throws them into the back line which is quite powerful too because imagine you have one tank in the front you just throw that into the back line they, they just walk into the back line and start hitting it so uh, Lysander is a quite quite a strong utility unit she's She's very strong against you specifically too because you have two really strong tanks. Usually you only have one. Malphite's not a good tank, but Chogath is a very good tank. And if you if you throw Chogath into the back, you're in you're in trouble basically. It's one of the ways you lose late game is people getting these Sanders online. We haven't a seer and econ the ball. Like at this point it's like fine. We're just going nine. Right? A seer's good. So we haven't talked about the end game. I haven't showed the end game. Well, we could do the end game board if you open the planner, maybe. I think you probably kill both here. If you open the planner, we might get there. So one of the reasons we don't make the end game board already is because it's gonna show up in the shops, which is like slightly annoying. He is fine. I think you kill both here. Maybe you don't do 15. We'll see. Maybe you don't do 15 to the guy i think you probably do so there so so if there's not enough people left in the lobby for a full like for everyone to fight someone someone's gonna fight a ghost and he's now fighting your ghost and your ghost is quite strong so uh, you end up killing both at the same time do you have uh, do you have time for one more yoink okay we'll do one last one i'll try to, to tell you even less about the game then now you like have to do some item pride on your on your own and then one last thing is like the uh the end game is like hit cogmo three choga three i'll share my screen i have the uh, i have the thing here i'm already streaming can you see my screen so this is the first board you recognize this we've done this multiple times the end game is is adding these units in this order roughly so the first one you want to add is Alawi because it gives you ghostly and arcanist and then you want to add nautilus because he's strong then you want to add Hui because he's strong and then you want to add wukong for like the same reasons but this is like slightly complex because what happens if when you're level six you can fit Alawi, it gives you two trades but when you're level seven you can fit uh two mythic units on top so you can go from three to five mythic which buffs your main carries right so on six you want to play Alawi, on seven you want to play two mythic units on eight you want to put in Alawi again and then like there's some to it, like some stuff to it but it's not that important it's just like generically this is how it goes when you go later into the game and these are really late games so you often end up playing like Tam Kench who's also a mythic unit you can like look for mythics but it's not really important you've seen it like the, mo the most important thing is these two as long as these have items the rest is like just put something in that works right? you put in Lysandra that game which is just an arcanist and that's fine but this is like this is the end game board we're looking for in level 9 so if you get to 9 with infinite gold this is what we're trying to get to um, this is what we're looking for looking for yeah the first game yeah or the second game I mean yeah and they got fucking railed you got really strong in that game I think we can queue up a ranked game too now yoink first ranked but yeah it's mostly the item tier list this is only Cockmore and, uh, and Chogath items usually you only build Cockmore and Chogath items until you have uh, three items in each and then after that we'll start doing other stuff but I've only told you about those items yeah, the rest of it you have to like slightly figure on your own. If you play like you like if you if the, the if the games go like they've gone like now, you're probably like getting placed in low gold, maybe high silver. Like you're pissed chilling. Yeah, like it doesn't hurt, but you haven't been like lucky, lucky. This is a very different beast than League, because like if you just queued this up without reading information, this is like really hard to get like into. And there's no barrier of entry to ranked either, right? So League, you have to be level 30 before you start playing. The floor in, in TFT is so low because you don't force people to play the game before they start playing ranked, basically. So most of what you're gonna do is fight people that don't stay, like they're gonna stay, they're gonna be serious gold the whole game they don't know what comps they're looking for like you're playing a real comp right and you're playing around real items so they're making nonsensical items without having any econ without playing a real board and you just cannot lose to those guys even if you're low roll um, so you're like your baseline is just like gold at this point um you're just gonna get there like more or less just do to not like, go in zero goal because if you're zero goal yeah, you're slightly stronger for like three rounds but you're just gonna fall so far behind and you have 100 hp to work with right so like there's no reason to fall behind early you can see at the very top you can see your timer basically you have like you don't have to yeah yeah, but that's completely fine. Yeah, I just want you to like read them and think about them, and then 
I'm gonna like at some point I'm gonna show you a, a method to like look up s the stats basically. You can just check what people have clicked and how good it was for them, and uh, and you just like following that is like the best thing to do for a while at least. So but until then we'll just we'll just like you'll just, like, just read them and like get to know them. And there's a lot of different ones, and, and being familiar with some of it's like pretty good. You're gonna have to learn at some point anyways. So now you're trying to win for the rest of the stage. So if you won one fight, you don't mind winning again. So now we're just trying to win. So it just gives you one item. You could choose either one. Yoink! <laughs> That's a good fucking start, no? We don't mind that. So most people don't get their best item, but you get your best item here. Now you're trying to win, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You can also you can also put the if you put the Malphite in real quick, it gives you a trait basically. If you do instead of the one star, the one star, yeah, exactly. You get Behemoth in, which is nice. You can actually make an item here. We have it in the tier list, I think. So now we're trying to win. So there's an item in the tier list that's not like horrible, but it's also not like insane, but it's makeable currently. Jewel Gorners and uh yeah, it's a B tier item, but it's it's top B tier, that's completely fine. And that's for uh, for the Cogmore. It's like a damage item. It gives you crit, yeah, yeah, it gives you crit on your ability basically. So his ability can now crit and he gets a bit of AP on top, which is quite nice. So he can now crit and uh, we didn't crit there, maybe we got a crit here yeah i could crit he gives one extra unit so like creating on the ability is like nice because it's just a multiplier right? the item is just like slightly weak like it's slightly understated so that's the reason we uh, we usually don't prior very highly it's just yeah it just doesn't do enough it's supposed to be slightly buffed i think but it's been bad for a while but it's better than the other options in this case and it's not like you could argue bis i think normal bis would be like blue buff nasher's jg or blue buff nasher gunblade or probably blue buff nasher jg that's like the normal bis i think the real bis is double nasher but that's like slightly hidden there's only like 200 plays of that whereas the jg line has like literal like 10,000 players. The Nash and Asher stuff is like slightly out there, but I think it's just the actual bis. But this is like normal bis, probably typical bis. So we don't mind this at all. Completely fine. Yeah, I think without without the JG here, you never win this fight. Oh, you probably still don't win it, but it helps a lot. So the reason we're trying to win fights here is not bad. It lets you kill a lot of units, which saves you a lot of HP. So like winning one fight is like annoying, but it's not that bad because now you're up, you're going to be up like 15, 10 HP on what you normally are, which is also, like, that's also a resource. Really, so I guess the issue is now you don't get item prior, which is slightly rough, but I guess maybe you have to lose until first care. So I'm on sure i think maybe you have to i think that's yeah i think i think even if you win the first round you need to be trying to lose afterwards i think not getting the uh the mana stuff going is too scary probably yeah we got the tier still which is piss nice but that's sad in our guarantee it would be nice if it was huh i think yeah i think i think while often correct to try and win here i think you have to just lose i think the tier is too important it's gonna be too hard without it i want to I wanna wait to like 50 here i think mm, yeah you, you get to get neutral in, you get into income on neutrals basically so like if you if you roll before neutrals you can see the top the crocs are common like in two rounds so like you get so at Crocs, you basically get a free round where you can lose, where being stronger doesn't matter. And you want to get as much extra intro interest in there. This is why the streak is so good. Because you get the streak on every fight you make, but you also get an extra turn of streak gold on Crocs. So you get one fight for free where you just lose for free without taking damage. This is why the lost streak is so good for your spot specifically, right? So you get to lose five rounds in a row, get the goal for losing five rounds in a row, but you also get the goal for losing five rounds in a row on Crocs without losing HP for it, which is really nice. That's one of the reasons we want to lose. The streaking is just kind of nice into neutrals. You basically double dip. You get a free round of, of interest, basically, which is quite nice. And like... You've lost three out of four rounds, but you're still top four in HPs because your losses are really, really good. Playing to win has a, has some benefits for sure. Right? We're still making good econ. We're saving a lot of HP, stuff like that. Right? Uh, clean first rank game so far. This looks promising. Uh, I have yet to, uh, yeah, I think we'll do that next week. But I have yet to teach you how to be a dickhead. So now we're. This is the first time you're gonna try this. So you can test it this game. Someone else is playing the same line you are. Yeah, like they they just play the same. They play the line for the same reason you do. You haven't you haven't seen him really. But he's not doing it on purpose. At least he's just playing it because he thinks he's supposed to. Uh, he's playing it wrong already. So you're already ahead. I think you have a lot of gold on him. He's already level five. Makes it harder for him to hit the units. Stuff like that. So so while he is on the line, I think you're fine. But that's gonna make it harder to hit, right? Because you're playing for the same units. So there's a shared pool of resources. He's taken some of the resources you want. So it's gonna be harder this game than normal. But you'd be fine. This is like slightly expected. This is gonna happen a lot of your games. Um, and we're gonna t um, there's gonna be some ways to avoid this later or you could like play another comp that's very similar but we're not going to talk about that before like in a week or two probably we could talk about it next time depending on how comfortable you get in the meantime but legally there's like there is an out but we don't we don't usually look for it and now we're back to like normal game plan we know the spot right so here you want to go, because you're level 4, you have 55% chance for 1 cost. So at level 4 specifically, which is always going to be a 3-1, if you don't buy any XP, you're, one, like you're going to level to 5 next turn, even if you want it or not, right? Just because you get 2 XP a turn. But on level 4, you have 55 instead of 45% chance for 1 cost. So rolling on level 4 is better than normal. So you want to go to like 40 here. It's like slightly advanced, but like going to 40 here is, is, is fine. And then just back to 15 and sit. That's fine. You just click the wrong one. That's fine. We'll just play the game from here. We know this. Just level 5 is just completely normal. Right? This is usually when we roll. So we know this spot too. Yeah, that's how it goes. People get 
get a stronger ball. He's also zero goal level six, right? So he's done a lot of resources. He spent all his resources to try and be strong right now. And you're trying to be strong in like three turns, four turns, basically. Or trying to be really strong in like five turns when you hit the three stars, right? So one one fun thing here is the, the one to the right is really good. I'll just tell you that instantly. I think that's a fun one. It makes it hard to kill your Joker, and you get extra items because he's hard to kill. It's a fun augment. You want the Caitlyn into, you can find it exactly. Yeah. And you're picking it up quickly. I'm like, yeah, you're quicker than I, than, I, than I hoped you would be, which is kind of sick, actually. I think Masters four weeks is not a cope. I think it's just, a, like, I think that's just real. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think we'll be there. I think, yeah, if you don't put it, it's, it's not going to happen if you don't do like three hours a day, basically. I think three hours a day might be enough. But if you don't get hooked, you don't get hooked. That's just life. Right? I'm not going to expect you to get hooked. I'm just going to assume you'll be, and then we'll we'll see what happens. And I'm not going to, yeah. like, I wouldn't force you even if I could, right? So. No, we're, just, we're just going again. You can like, so you can check the other people's boards if you want to. Like go and check. So there's a way to see if you're contested or not. But you can just like go and s say hi to people. You can see that guy was playing your sport. Right? Playing the same board you were. Yeah, yeah. There's another There's another guy playing the same comp, basically. But that's like fine. That's just life. You're going to get, like you're going to have to get used to it. It's going to happen pretty often. <laughs> the comp's pretty popular for, like, one cards are pretty popular though, you know, usually for the, for the same reason we're doing it. We're fucking guard of the game, so we're piss chilling. So one thing we could do here that's slightly atypical and is, is augment dependent is we could go for a cloak instead of a tear off carousel. If you read the uh, the augment you took, it's just based on the healing of the dragon of dragon claws. You get more items, like components, over time. If you make another dragon claw, you're just gonna get their double, like at double the speed. Right? So it's basically a way to farm extra components. So if you make another decal, you just get more components faster. It's it's two. Oh yeah, yeah my bad. It's because I just assume I was like easy. It's two cloaks combined basically. If you check the cloak, if you do two cloaks, you get a dragon's claw, and it, it heals HP, which is really nice, and it makes your tank, which is really nice too. Yeah, they're both fine. Yeah, they're both fine. They're both good for all the normal reasons. Yeah. So we really want the tier here. If we're lucky, we get it. This guy might be looking for it. If he knows what he's doing, he's looking for it i think i think he's the other guy playing cock more basically but i don't know so it's a it's a small duplicator basically and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna end up calling a nico a lot but it's a small duplicator it's, it used to be called a nico's help but it lets you make one copy of a unit basically and if it's a blue one like this one it's only three cost and down if it's a yellow one it's whatever unit you want um, so if you if you want off if you hit choke and you want off cock more you can just make another cock more with that one so it's just gonna make it so you only have to find eight of one of them basically which is really nice yeah it's just made it just you get the last one if you need it you want to save it for the very last one you need so but it's really really nice it's, it's worth like 10 gold to you at least so it's really good for you because it's not that much gold for most people because you're, you're spending gold rolling for the units whereas most people are not so for you for them it's mostly worth like three gold for you it's worth like 10 gold most of the time so it's really nice for you so that's uh yeah you can see at the top this swirly thing on the carousel so usually on that round there's just like a normal carousel at the very top of the way you can see like the, the rounds you're playing but this game there's a swirl on the carousel which means something's been done to it and this game this case was just giving you an extra nico on the on the unit right? and encounter modify this carousel says it just means you get an extra nico which is really nice for you sometimes it's very bad for you but in this case is very good for you so we'll take it yeah you're hitting everything here you're in a good spot to hit everything you can buy the uh i'm not gonna yeah it doesn't matter it's too complicated it doesn't make sense to mention yet yeah that's why i say you could push a bit here if you wanted to because you're like you're streaking a bit yeah you always buy that yeah so you're paying all your gold to try and find him so paying one more gold to buy him is completely fine right? we're trying to that's what we're spending gold on those guys you got the same idea huh we spend the same comp you're gonna hit he's not going to but he's double deep already it's probably gonna be a problem for you oh he's no blue buff you might be fast enough actually it's just you're gonna have a heart so you need to kill his backline before your choke dies basically because you're not gonna be able to kill a choke with the, yeah this is scary yeah you didn't get to the back line he's level six though which makes it hard right? you kill a lot of units you're kind of chilling and cog one missed which is bad missed twice which is bad but <laughs> that's got more no he's like that guys are fraud but yeah they're probably gonna fix it at some point currently he does that a lot you're in a good spot this looks this looks pretty fucking good i think you're chilling i think the top mark guy might be smurfing so you're probably going second but we'll take a second 60 claw might be slightly overkill <laughs> we'll allow it 60 claw pretty fucking fire though Lule, that's not bad huh that's fucking nice yeah just take a look yeah that's a really good idea so that's what the first thing we're trying to do is just make that yeah, what else can we do can you build another chill item maybe if you can build another tank item you want to that's a good take. I think just just makes death pass here is good. You just want to make items as you go along. Death pass fine. It's not like broken, but it's a good tank item, and it kills the glow, which is nice. You can wait. You can yeah. You can go like slow too. You can wait. Fights that you can't upgrade currently. You have to wait for the the next round anyways. So you, and if if the round rolls over, it resets your shop. So if you're rolling mid round, you might sometimes lose a shop you didn't want to lose. So these are pretty important. So I'll I'll take the wheel here. I think yeah, re roll the one to the right. You probably also re roll the. You have an ashes there. Just re roll the one to the left maybe one accomplice oh no 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 just re just reroll the one in the middle accomplice is too much work i think yeah oh we, we take that so we roll the one to the left again and just take the one in the middle probably yeah oh no you can click the one to the left call to chaos is slightly fun so i think we click that <laughs> That's not that's not even bad. So uh, you can you can small Nico the cockmore if you want to. You have eight or nine cockmores. So you have the thing that makes another cockmore. Right? 
You just make another copy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You get it just in time. So um, we clicked an open that's like slightly weird. It's called Call to Chaos. You don't actually know what it does before you click it. This game, one of the effects it does is give you a three, like one of the effects it can roll is give you a random three star three cost. So you're running three star one costs. You now have a three star three cost on your bench. We're going to play on the board. Uh, so you, you, we're going to have to play the Thresh this game. Uh, but Thresh is quite good. So this is not bad. It's just, it's it's weird and makes you play the game different. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll just let them put that guy in because he's he's a fucking menace. So hopefully he's exalted. We fuck it, he's exalted. Oh, interesting. You could take... Uh, so here it offers you one of the big ones or two of the small ones. The two small ones let you make uh, Malphite 3 instantly, which is also quite nice. So you could take the two small ones if you want to. You can also take the big one and look for like way later, but they're both fine. Boom. And you can uh, and you just level now because you have Kogamoth 3 and Choga 3, so we always just level. And then we put Thresh in. Thresh is a big, chunky fucking boy here. And you can see his LSP bar. So all the small intervals are all worth like 100 HP or something like that, 200 HP. I can't remember the actual thing. So you can see he's pretty tanky. And then we could like buy Lao. We wanted Lao in soonish. Maybe like next turn. Because he's Arcanist and Ghost. We haven't we haven't really prepped the board after level five, but she's one of the units we're we're looking to put in. So we're we're gonna buy her. She's on the end game board too. Yeah. The reason she's not on the pl nah nah, we're just leveling up. We hit Cogmon Chogas and now we're trying to go nine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You hit your three cards and now you're really strong. You hit them early stage four. So you said you were locking the other games, but the other games you hit on like four five. Uh, like four seven stuff but this game you hit like four two which is the expected timing this is how strong you're supposed to be basically yeah, this is going to be most of your games some of the games you're just going to get railed and it's not the case but that's life but you want tank items here because you have infinite tanks like you have a thresh three you want to put items on really badly so you're just looking for good tank items here you can go clover you can go redemption you can go whatever like you can do whatever Redemption is nice, yeah. It's also really good if you have multiple tanks because it heals around them too. So it actually heals multiple units. It heals everyone around. So if you put like Thresh in the middle and give him redemption, both Cho'Gath and Malphite are going to get healed, which is really nice. And they also get the damage reduction, which is quite strong. So a weak. That's really strong now. You can just level here. I think you're like, you're, you're insanely rich. <laughs> you can just level here. You could put uh, you could put Behemoth in actually if you want to. That's also quite good. So it's because we have the Thresh, who's like not usually on the board. So we have three out of four Behemoths. But if you buy like Yorga Shannon Shop, you can get to four Behemoth here because there's nowhere we're not playing. Is any of them? So there's no way we're not playing Thresh in this game because he's he's a three star three cost. But it's a weird thing we didn't plan for, so now we have to plan around it or like play around it. And it gets us to like three out of four behemoths. We can just play four behemoths because both Malphite and Cho'Gath are behemoths, so it just gives them more stats. So now both your Cho'Gath and your Malphite are stronger, and your Thresh they're all got stronger. Right? And since we care about all of them, behemoth gets quite good here. Yeah, you have fucking insane front line, like wild front line. So that's the game plan here. We're just playing demonic front line, and then um, yeah, spot's pretty sick. <laughs> just pretty sick spot. Um, you can move Cho'Gath out because he doesn't take any damage currently. Which which is bad because you don't get to heal then, <laughs> which is rough. This is a fun one. Yeah, it's like to the move spot, move him with Malphite basically. Like just swap those two. He's not gonna die, so you can just put him in Malphite spot. Yeah. So this is a fun one too. So choose a component. Sarah gains you three copies of her. As so you get three of that component, three tiers, or three chains, or three bows, or three swords. You could do another redemption. You could do yeah. You could do whatever. Like it's all fine. These are mostly all fine. So now this game is like oh, this game's gonna be weird for like for um. What's that called for? Yeah, so now we have the Thresh on the board, which is going to be weird for the late game here, but we'll figure it out. That's how it goes. So it's completely fine. And so that's part of the learning process, right? He, he, get, he, he casts a bit more, so you get a bit more shielding, which is nice. He also does a bit more damage, actually. Thresh actually does a, a, like a surprising amount of damage, but he's weird. He does the same as Nico. He hits people around him, basically. So if he's not surrounded, he doesn't do that much, but you mostly just want him to like heal people, like shield people, which he's doing now. So that's nice. He's doing what he's supposed to. The boss just doing like you just won four rounds in a row very convincingly, right? Like you're in a good spot. It's, yeah, I think calls of chaos. I think generically, like if you're feeling comfortable, it's a fun thing to play because it can do a lot of weird shit. It can do like here's 70 uh, XP, it just gives you 70 XP. Here's a dummy with two items on it. Here's three three items that are weird. Here's here's 40. You can roll 40 times now whenever you want to. You just have 40 free rolls. Like it does a lot of like a lot of stuff like that. Basically. Uh, and you don't know which one you get, but they're all quite powerful if you can use them. But sometimes you get something you can't use. That's life. Right? But it's fun to like get something you didn't plan for and then play around it. So and it's also just quite powerful. Yeah, you can do some gated items. You can also save items for um Huey later, basically. So so Huey is gonna be your secondary carry because you're gonna be fast enough to get to nine. Um and Caden is not three star. Caden is three star. We just make items for Caden here instantly, but she's not. So since she's not three star, we don't really want to put items on her because we, we have a high value target later. It's either Aurelia or Huey. Aurelia is easier to find. Not Aurelia, what's she called? Lilia is easier to find, but Huey is a lot stronger. But Lilia is a four cost instead of a five cost, which makes it a lot easier to get to. Um, so we're trying to find a way to put him on, but we'll just we'll just figure it out later. I haven't done like Huey items yet. You'll have to figure that out on your own. But you can like, yeah, you have a hundred gold. You can just level instead of 50, I think. <laughs> 
You also, if you wait, you get more components from Cho'Gath, so you might get a, a better option later. If you hover the uh, the bottom right, right, you can see it's down by volley, right above Volley Bear. There's a weird thing called yeah that one. Let's let's read that real quick. So I'm seeing you. you so Exalt is a weird trait. Every game, it's a different set of units. This set, this game is only one cost, right? But how it works, if you play three of them, your board gets 10% more damage. So currently you're one unit away from 10% damage, which is quite nice. 10% damage is quite good. I think I wouldn't think too much about it. This is like pretty, because it, it makes you deviate from your plan too much, but like just, it is a cool thing that happened. And like that's in the game currently, where like you sometimes get the option to play a different version of your board that's often stronger, but you have to do something you're not used to. We'll just we'll just leave it for, for some other time. So that's the uh, that's the declaw healing enough. So now that the small alt drop, it's just an extra component. You get to play around now. That could be another declaw if you're lucky we can start doing more healing basically you have the anvil you can do a 50 50 for a decal if you want to just get another one healing the best one here is probably bow but they're all quite bad so like it's not that important no, so you could do like you could do like red buff gs way and he's gonna do way stuff with it it's just like yeah so gs is both ap and ad and is a multiplier it's usually better than 80 units but generally quite strong this guy's quite strong too you're fighting someone with full upgrades he's also level eight zero goal he's not going nine but he hit the whole board like he's caught one three with good items Oh, you, you're kind of shredding his ass though. Oh, he got fucking brave. I thought I got trying strong. <laughs> he could smoke. No mind. <laughs> you're a brave kid. And he killed him. Holy imagine. He's playing the same combo. You're taking all his units and then you also kill him. Kind of rude, no? You can just uh, you can do whatever you want here. I'll just let you do like, I'm not going to like, all the choices are fine. For round league. It's a tank. I know. We'll take it. If we, if we over the, hmm? Yeah, yeah. It's called Steadfast, which is like, which is like, it's just an alarm. It's fine. It's just, they changed the name. If we go into the plan, we'll like put in the, the end game board here. You should know what you're looking for. Because I'll let you do the roll on your own. Yep, that's completely fine. Yeah, good place to put it. But if you go, if you go on the team, like top right, there's like um top right the uh exciting team planner. We'll put in the rest of the units you need for the for the comp. This game is weird because we have a thresh. He's a three cost, we'll have to put him on the board. Because we're not we're not, not playing a three star thresh, basically. So he's always on the board. So we have to plan around him. And we're always playing Huey because he's an insanely strong legendary. So we'll go down and find him on the five cost. Exactly. He's really good. And now we want another behemoth. So we're probably clicking like Udir here, because he's a legendary behemoth. And then we'll do, we have one more mythic we need. We'll do any mythic. We'll probably do like, since the Frontline Saga, we'll buy Lilia probably. Lilia's probably the play here. And she's like right above Silas in the four cost. Exactly. I think that's the ball we're playing. So that's slightly different than the normal board. The normal board you can see in the spreadsheet. But it's because you have a, a Thresh 3 for, for some reason this game. Which is not usually the case, but like, there's no way we're not playing him. He's too good to not play. And then you're just trying to build items for Huey now. And yeah, I should do like a generic item. Like, yeah, Huey, we don't have it yet, but we're playing for him later. So at some point, we'll get him. And at that point, we'll put items on him. So we'll just like plan items around that. It's weird. But like, red buff is attack speed. So that just means more cast, which is nice. GS is just more damage. That's also nice. Uh, red buff is good for a, for a second reason too. It gives that anti healing. Anti, we haven't talked about anti healing yet. So we talked about Shred. Shred's good. There's two utility types in the game, really. So Shred is good because it lets you do more damage to tanks. Um, anti healing is good because it makes healing worse. But you have inbuilt anti healing this comp. Chogath, whenever he casts some people, he anti heals them, anyways. So we haven't talked about anti healing because the comp actually doesn't need it. But if you get to Huey, getting anti healing on Huey is quite strong. Um, you don't mind having like Huey with a red buff on it. It's really good because he hits the whole board. Chogath only hits the front line. But Huey also hits the back line, which is quite, quite, quite good. Yeah, yeah we, we, we level first and then we look for him. You can't really find him on. So you're 3% for legendaries now. Next level, you have like 10 or 15%. So you kind of have to go 9 to find him, which is why we want to go 9 because we can find way on 9 basically. But you can just go in. Yeah, yeah, just like 50 is the only like above 50 doesn't do anything because it don't let it. So there's one augment actually that should make 10 interest of 10, but we don't have that augment. <laughs> He's the, you're the code. Yoink. Not bad. 10%. There's eight of them. So we'll take it. But actually, really fucking good. He's insane. You know, it's piss broken. Oh, you can uh, you can put Caitlyn in the thing now. She's a one cost, so you gain a Caitlyn every turn if he's on the in the weird swirly thing on the bench. Exactly. So once a turn, he's just gonna make an extra Caitlyn. So you can maybe get Caitlyn through this game for fun. So it's not bad. And you have you can go. So level ten is a thing we haven't talked about, but legally level ten is something you can get to. Level ten does exist. It's basically never worth it because you could just roll on nine and hit all your upgrades. But you could just go ten this game for fun if you wanted to. But legally, you basically never go level ten. It's very rare. I think. Yeah, I wouldn't expect you to ever be in a spot to do it. Or like, yeah, I think it's so hard to recognize the spot for level ten that you're supposed to just think it doesn't exist. You just don't think it, like it exists. Bas it's basically always the max. Ten is like weird and rare, rare, and you need like weird regions and organs for it to make sense. You basically never go level ten. So, so you basically just roll for your board here instead. Yeah, why not? Like it costs one gold, but we don't care about one gold currently. We care about being strong. Right? So we'll do it until we find something better. Yeah, we put her in there. So we're looking for it. Because it goes to five mythic, basically. So Lilia's the unit we don't have on the board yet. I guess we just need to figure out how to fit Wukong. I don't know how to fit Wukong on this board. Fuck it. We'll just, yeah, I think you just keep rolling here. It'll be fine. The guy you're fighting is really strong, um, but you're probably fine when you hit the rest of your upgrades. You can see here, like, this guy's super strong. Right? Yeah, exactly. 
He's playing one of the better. This is one of the highest capped comps in the game. He's playing bar three Kench three. They're really, really good. They're also mythic, I guess. But we want Lillian, so. So we want Lillian somehow. We'll, so we want to drop in Lao because we want to keep four behemoth, basically. It's just because four behemoth is your front line, basically. You can, if you right click, you can see how much range they have. That's an easy tell, right? So if they have four hexes, they probably want to be back line. You can make items here too if you want to. You have a lot of items in your available. So, th so you never get components ever again. So it, the moment you get the component anvil at the, uh, you get it by like raptors, they're called. The moment raptors are, are, are dead, there's no more components. There's only full items left. So you kind of have to use all your components because there's nothing left to do with them, if not. Because you never get another component to like do anything with. That's a really good choice, yeah. And then GS is, like if you read GS, it's just like, again, it's a tank, a tank shredder, but it works for magic too. So you just put it on Huey and you're fine. You can take whatever here, yeah. There's a lot of good options here. Yoink. It's quite good in this lobby too because they're both AP matchups, I think. So d -Claw just gives magic assist. You have the augment, yeah, exactly. So you just farm in the last few. Either one, like any of your damage dealers. Both Wei and, uh, and Lily are quite strong. So you can just do it on either one. You can stack items. Stacking items is usually quite good, right? You still have a lot of gold. Like, so you, like yeah, you, you have like a weird time crunch here. At the end of the game, you have a lot of resources. You're trying to get as strong as possible before the other guys get even stronger. So you try and kill them fast. You can still hit Wei too. We haven't found Udir yet. We found Lilia. We have an item anvil too. We can pop for extra juice. There's a lot of good options here. They're all quite good. Thieves Gloves on an, like, on an Aurelia too is fine. Nasher on Wei is good. Shiv on Wei is also probably quite good. The best one's probably Nasher's, but they're pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Udir and Wei. Wei too is really strong. You can look for like Lilia 3 for fun if you want to. You probably never get, you probably don't get there in time, but like you might as well, right? So this is one of the places where like rolling with your, if you click the D on your keyboard instead, you're a lot faster. I, I roll with my mouse all the time, so don't feel bad about it. It's just like, it's a good way to like practice the roll down because you have a lot of gold. You just want to go zero gold here basically because there's nothing left in the game. You can see like they're both 14 HP, 11 HP. So that if you win one fight, you win. So you just want to be as strong as possible now and try and kill them. So usually when you get to nine, you stop making econ interest. And you just start like rolling because you just want to be strong instantly. Because There's nothing, the, the game's basically over. You've got an idea, yeah. But it's just, uh, the game's basically over, so we just fucking send there. Right? There's nothing left to do but like hit your units. So that's the idea at least. Late game, you stop caring. The only thing you really care about, you just kill both again because you're pissed strong. But that's uh, the first rank game. You made, a, you made, you made some good items decisions in the game like they were like slightly on like unprompted you made the yeah i think that was promising i think you're gold uh like already oh it's like, like it's not you haven't done placements right you have four more games left so yeah i think you stabilize at least gold that's very promising yeah, but uh yeah very cool i didn't teach you about augments and uh, i'll show it off real quick it's it's not that com like it's pretty like it's pretty mechanical but basically you can there's a stat website and i'll show you how to check it i made a search that should just work for you i need i need you to check it out if the search works but it should just have already put the search in for you you just need to decide what you're looking for basically so um so what you do is you open this link and you do that you probably just do this before you start playing the game and this is like you could do this prep work ahead of time it's called tactical tools explorer it's going to open this website yeah so what you do is you you put in cockmore and you put in chogath because those are the units we're playing and we're, we're, we're going to say they're three star this is the board you're playing so now we're only looking at so so what this this website does is it takes all the games that have been played so what it does is like when it goes it goes in whenever a game has been played it records the game every every board in the game so here's like the game we, i played we were like eight people in the game and people had these boards at the end of the game these are all the, the boards they died with it just records all this and then if i so if we put in choga three and cogma three it's only taking the games it's only like the only sample it's looking at is the sample that includes cogma three and choga three on the board basically which is all the boards we care about so like if you're playing that comp specifically if you're only looking at boards where that condition is true what are the what what stuff's true we see like the really good items are like Ionic Spark, Redemption, Dragon's Claw, Nash's Tooth. This is like slightly hard to read misleading. This is, a lot of this is like slightly misleading. But one thing that's not that misleading is going into augments and just seeing, okay, I'm on 2-1, the first augment of the game, and I'm and they're offering me a silver augment. My augments are just these augments in this order. These are like, this is just how you should pick your augments, basically. And uh, this is searchable. So you could do like Stimpak. If I'm looking for like, I don't know if it's Best Friends, it's Stimpak or it's Pandora's. I just put all of them in with comma. I can just comma separate them. And it just tells me, oh, Stimpak, Best Friends, Pandora's have these stats on 2-1. This one's the best one by 0.1. So I click that one. And like, you can just like do searches whenever like you you get like oh i have healing ops offer too and you can just like add more to it and just take the top one um that's the easiest way to get good augments every time today you've just mostly been clicking augments as you wanted to and it still went fine so the augments are not that important but some of them are really powerful uh, a lot of them change the way you're supposed to play the game a lot which is like slightly scary but it's also kind of fun like too much candy is kind of it's kind of an interesting augment your rerolls cost zero gold every time you reroll six times the cost goes up by one gold so the first six are free the next six cost one the next six cost two and then the next six cost three uh, but it resets to zero gold again at the start of the next stage so basically you want to roll for free six times and then for one gold six times and then do that every stage 
trademark. Exactly. Right? It's very good for one cost. It's also quite good for two costs. It's not that good for the later comps, but it's, it, it makes your rerolling way cheaper, right? Stuff like that. This one, scoreboard scrapper. If you're the bottom four of the people on the right, like if you're bottom at the bottom of the lobby, your team gains more stats for the rest of the game. Stuff like that. It's like, it just works. You don't have to have the units on the board. It's just like, it's just an aura on your board. Every time you lose, your board just, if you're, if your unit's on the board, it gets bonus stats. Also quite strong, but you want to lose more with this than normal stuff like that, right? Fully adapted. This gives you adaptive helm now gives so adaptive helm is a weird item that gives different stats depending on if it's the front two rows or the back two rows. This gives you all the stats at all like at all times, which means it's very strong on Toga because now he does a lot more damage and stuff like that. Like there, there's a lot of like weird organs in here. Snipers, you gain an item after your snipers attack for like a, a lot of range. Like they change how you're supposed to play a lot, but they're also fun and they're quite powerful. That's like the the main thing we didn't do today, but you can just do this list. I, I hit challenges just doing this every game. I didn't think on my own. I just click the best one every time this is the most advanced thing today i think this is quite powerful though it's a lot of value but don't think too hard about it if you don't have the time you don't have the time right? it's like when you when you get the comp down and you don't have anything to do and like you feel like you have the extra energy to expend it's also a lot easier with two screens you could do this this is like an optimization that's worth something but like just get used to the board first right? i think that was very promising so i'm excited to see you again next week and see how far you got cool good to see you yeah appreciate the, uh, the session yeah and uh, see you next week on monday probably yeah